and yeah we are away go for it well i well welcome back everybody to part three of in high dungeon <sighs> Uh, so thanks very much to uh, to Inwills and the Incrowd for returning for another of these intense sessions <laughs> yeah. uh, in, based on Jack Vance's Leoness. Um, we're we're kind of going to pick up roughly from where we left off, but given that it's been a few weeks uh, due to various technical difficulties and other challenges, I thought it might be a good idea. Uh, before I sort of do a recap on where we were, if we just have a brief reintroduction of the characters, who you are, what you're playing, and what your impressions have been so far of the village of Dudgeon, which is uh, a low Dudgeon, which is where you're you're currently based. So um, why don't we start with uh, with you, um, in Wills, and uh, yeah. who are you playing, and what are you up to so far? Yeah, so I play a wonderful strongman character called Serford the Mighty. He is big, he is bulky, he is, is allegedly has the strength of 10 normal people. Um, he, he is strong on arm and bicep and chest. However, he is somewhat weak in love. He easily falls in love with everyone and then people generally break his heart and that's oh. when he becomes very sad as well as being a terrific so strong man he is a poet at heart and the party have um encountered some of his most more poetic <laughs> verse at times however he is he's in the group of this like the circus the traveling minstrels his act is all about lifting things bending things and rubbing himself with oil to make his skin glisten in the sunlight um yeah we my in i've fallen in love <laughs> <laughs> we have one of the, <laughs> one a beautiful of the, Renya. Who, uh, Renya, uh, that's yeah. it. Yeah, not gone gone too well, has that? Has no, it? we we took up residence, um, and I saw Renya through the crowd, and my passion for f falling in love easily happened, and I pursued her to no avail, um, even to well she very clearly made it plain that she wanted nothing to do with Serford at all. <laughs> However, he is on a mission to see why there is so much bad luck in Low Dudgeon. And he did, no, of he did have a, a feeling that it was to do with a group of ruffians in the, the local tavern. And he last week, he or last time we play, he sort of like, brought that to an end and started a somewhat of a barroom brawl. Um, Indeed yeah, you did. Yeah, fisticuffs. Yeah, fisticuffs, which he operated very well in, I like to so. say. So, yeah. You did, you did very well. I do hope that um, when, when you come to edit this, uh, that you will overdub some mournful violin music in the, <laughs> yes. in the background, small violin, small orchestra perhaps. Yeah, uh, full orchestra. Maybe, maybe the theme from Love Story might be appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that's that's oh. Serford the Mighty. Serford the Mighty, thank you, in So, Mr. Pickles, who do we have from you? I play Basquiel the Deft, and I absolutely love him because he is the best juggler in the land, or at least he thinks so. He's always in for the laugh. Um, he'll juggle anything just to get attention. Um, and he's got a bad case of whenever he gets negative attention, he gets resentful and takes petty revenge on anybody he can. And if he doesn't take petty revenge, it just eats away at him. Like that one woman who just shared gossip so easily and it, it, it ate at him, even if he didn't punish her for, for having just no, no willpower. Um, he's very much a conniving Weasley sort of person. Um, trying to heavy-handedly manipulate some of his festive fellows to investigate things he wants. Uh, for example, he uh, tried to weave a tail to get Serfod to help him find this upside-down uh, horseshoe, since he couldn't Indeed. get it off himself. Um, he tends to be sarcastic, steals a lot from people, um, and for the most part, since he's been, well, he's not rested he's wanted in about 18 villages so he doesn't view these villagers as something <laughs> i oh, didn't know this I, I, oh. <laughs> this, this is well, new to uh, me yeah. <laughs> okay i'm a wanted um 
And so he goes to a village. He doesn't necessarily look at it as um, a community building exercise. He knows we're going to be moving on, and uh, he may be curious about things, but he's he's not really trying to fall in love with anybody. <laughs> Who needs friends? Who needs friends? Oh, when I have you friends. Go? You do. <laughs> Well, maybe not for much longer, but you have them at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Jolly good. So, Longshanks, over to you. Hi, guys. I'm playing Sir Yedney of Thrusk. He's um, a noble knight from the north of um, Leoness. Um, some various things happened in the background, and he, he can't he, he can't go back to Thrusk um, because if he goes back, um, awful things will happen to him, um, such as being branded a coward. Um, a craven, um, a yellow liver, those sorts of things. So yeah, he, he can't go back. Um, and in the process of fleeing, he uh, had to sell off a lot of his knightly armor. Um, so he's just left with his 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 leg, he, his um, his boots, and his helmet, sword and shield. Um, but he's an expert marksman. Think Robin Hood, but better. Um, that's that, that, that's the be that's the best way of describing him um, with his archery skills. That is, you know, sort of like he could instead of just shooting the arrow in the apple, he would have shot that shot blindfolded um, through his legs backwards type thing. Um, but and he's had some very very bad luck recently in this fair in the Dungeoners. Um, he 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 decided to do some jousting. Thinking it would be really, you know, really good to support low dungeon in jousting. Found out it was donkey jousting. Was a little bit hesitant, but thought, well, I've, I've, I've what I've could possibly that. go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? Well, turns out you can fall off a donkey, <laughs> not going very fast, and shatter your collarbone. So that's what's happened to, to Sir Yedney quite recently. So he's he's been stitched up and, and bandaged up, and is wandering around trying to help um, the low dungeoners get one over on these cheating high dungeoners. Who have won the fair for the last X number, like more than a decade, um, oh, and all the competitions. Sure. So he's uh, he's very keen to right that wrong. And oh, I'm in a sling victory for Low Dudgeon. And last but not least, Medivac. I thank you. I played Mandelbrot the Destined. You'll have heard him over campfires talking about his large family, his brother, and his eleven sisters, and, and how his grandfather saw the magic in him and showed him how to how to cast spells no not, nobody else in his family can do this but, but he can and it's it's just he has the power within him he's, he's a glass half full person he always sees the positive in everything he's always very um it, it, nothing could go wrong for him even when he does, it doesn't really. <laughs> it's not what other people see, really. He meant it to happen. So his, his act in the in, in this caravan is he can make coins spin, he can make people dance, he can make people also tell their deepest, well, whatever, whatever's on their mind, really. Blurt so, out what's uppermost in their mind. That's he's right. <laughs> um He's been going around low dungeon at the moment, um, trying to find horseshoes. He knows these horseshoes are bad. He wants to find them. He's a little bit concerned about how he's going to get them off. He's, he's, he's taken one off at the moment, uh, sorry, two off at the moment, and um, Sedford, uh, Sedford helped take another one off, um, his beloved cottage. Um, <laughs> What's most in Mandelbrot's mind, though, is he wants to take his friends to a glorious castle that he will create from a piece of bread. He will do these things because one day he will become a mighty magician. This is a new one. Castles from bread? Yes. Oh, it's oh, amazing. I'll be interested make, to see how that one happens. If you can make horses from mice, I'm sure castles from bread will be fine. I have to say, and I know Surfold doesn't know this, but as a player, I thought I was with a really group of nice characters. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you haven't known? Oh, I, I just sort of like think, oh, what's going on here? We got criminals and <laughs> yellow backs. I just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For, so, funny, to be fair, to see Yedney, be fair to see Yedney. The people that made him flee were pretty scary. 
Mm. <laughs> very scary. Yeah, the scar. I know. Laughing yeah. matter. So they're, they're, they're yeah. very scary. <laughs> they're horrible. <laughs> they're horrible scar. people. They like putting arms off people. Mm. Well, yes, the, just the, for the fun. Scar- the, the scar for those of you that, that aren't aware of them they are they were ki- they were kicked out of scandinavia by the vikings because they were too violent for the vikings <laughs> that that's how bad they are um, they were kicked out of ireland by the irish because they were too violent for the irish um, and so wow. they they shipped up on uh, one of the islands surrounding uh, the, the main isle of uh, of the elder isles um, and have decided to invade. They currently occupy an area called the Foreshore up in the northwest of the main island of Hybris. And they've sort of been pushing steadily into two countries, North Oldfland and South Oldfland. And it's North Oldfland that they, they almost fully occupy. The, the king there's kind of rolled over and surrendered and he's, he's, he's more or less a puppet ruler now. And the, the Scar are occupying more and more territory and they're pushing further and further into Hybras. And uh, although none of you, apart from the Yeni, have ever come across them directly, they're, they're, they're pretty brutal. They're, they suffer from a huge inferior, superiority complex. And uh, anybody that is non-Scar is to be disdained Hmm. I'm just. So, I'm just. So can you blame him for running away? No, but I'm just <laughs> suspicious of the person who's below me now, who's been banned for. There, I was thinking you were such a nice, pleasant person. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm only wanted. I'm only wanted. I haven't gotten a trial yet. I'm innocent, probably. There's no smoke without some. fire. I'm sure. Of it. Yeah. If you pick that cat up any time through this adventure and start to juggle with it. <laughs> Well, I'm just going to stand, stay with Mandelbrot now, I think. <laughs> you know, I, I value my... I've never stolen from you guys. I've stolen for you guys. Right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so Yedni is now counting his silver. <laughs> yes. Just, 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 just <laughs> All right. So a, a quick recap on uh, what happened in, in uh, the, the last session that we had. Um, you had encountered a strange sparkly person in the, the streets of Low Dudgeon, not far from mm-hmm. the inn. Um, so you, uh, Surford, the mighty, had gone to confront them. Um, and it appears to use magic to just disappear uh, when you try to find out why he'd been watching Renya's cottage. What part does he have to play in this mystery? And why does your hair have a silver cream shine to it? Mm. And my God, is that the Colgate ring of confidence around your teeth? It was that kind of beauty that he was exhibiting, which kind of indicates he may well be a fairy. And then, poof, he was gone, just like that. Um, you had then sort of hung around the, the inn, speculating on what you were going to do here. Uh, you had confronted the, or, or rather, sort of tried to gain the confidence of the local blacksmith, Naka. Uh, you'd managed to definitely gain the confidence of his apprentice, Shanna, who really wants to be a squire to a knight more than she wants to be a blacksmith's apprentice. And so she's kind of latched onto Sir Yedney and uh, could prove to be, to be quite useful for you. Uh, she was going to mobilise local uh, local children of the town to hunt for more horseshoes. Um, Surford had encountered the landlady of the Hill Hollow Hall, the tavern here in Low Dudgeon, who was rather impressed with his physique um, and uh, had, had sort of brought him, swooned and had to be carried inside. And <laughs> all this kind of led to... Uh, well, sort of more romantic into I think you managed to avoid falling in love with this one. Yeah. Uh, your heart clearly belongs to Renya. Um, but you had also confronted Black Tam Shandy and mm. his charcoal folks, the local heavies who are clearly up to no good and planning something dastardly to happen at the end of the Midsummer Games should High Dudgeon prevail, as they have done for the last 10 years. And I think that was kind of where we'd left things. Yeah. Um, so you'd beaten the uh, the charcoal folks into submission yeah. um, using a variety of, of uh, tankards, bar stools, and other miscellaneous weapons. Um, they, they knew they'd been in a fight by the end of that. Um, you did very, very well indeed. So really, it's a question of picking up from where we left off and uh, how you want to continue the investigation, 
where you want to go, and what ends do you now need to follow up on? Mandelbrot normally leads us in this. <laughs> <laughs> I was dreading this, but... How many horseshoes did you have in total, by the way, that you'd actually <laughs> loosed from their places? We have three now. Uh, we have the one from the water butt, uh, yep. on the trough, sorry. And we have the one yep. from the cottage and the one from my bushes. You can just die in a second. Uh, and one from... From the, the well, post. I believe. No, the post. We, oh, we don't have the well. Yeah, we don't have the well. We don't have the tavern. And we don't have the sawmill. one above the sawmill. So and there's one but we don't know, know about. Else. Yeah, we know they're there. But there's one we don't know about still. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so, plan of action. So, Fod wants to um, ask Mandelbrot, uh, and this sort of like, uh, I, I suppose we're still in the tavern, sort of like, um, after we've um, dealt with these ruffians. And um, we put, uh, Sir Fod's not the brightest person around but you know he he can write poetry so he's not that bad and he sort of like um turns to mandelbrot and says so the the these horseshoes uh, are they are they what's causing all the bad luck here well i i, I do believe so it, it's it's the only thing we found that's it's it's out of the ordinary and it, it what Somebody's been placing these upside down, which everybody knows that causes bad luck. Yeah. And if there's a lot of them, I mean, luckily we know there's seven because that was how many were stolen from the blacksmith here. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's it's just trying to find out where the last one is. We know where three are. And the other thing is we've got to also find out how we can try to get the last four out of their places. If we can just either chop around them and take them off or if we can like like with the with the, with the, the post when we we first had it we turned it upside down didn't we we don't know if that worked but well it was a good effort so we will we'll just one person be putting these up then well we don't know who's putting them up this is this is the other crux of our problem is um finding out who's doing this in the first place and if you remember this we also have a, a third bit of excitement i like to call it of the dancing ladies or the dancing people in the field yeah. do you remember that night of those so we, we you know who they look who they are and what they look like so and i think uh, you spotted one yeah so they, they were from, the, yeah the, the dancing people were uh one of the high dungeon uh, uh contest team i don't know what game they're participating but they're doing sort of a, a hacker or something equivalent like that it, it looked very magical and the ritual there's lots of hike, hike, hike and uh kicking up and throwing up of arms and things and there's also this this fairy guy yes that's the most i would say worrying but perplexing thing that we've come across is is what is the interest if he is a fairy what is the interest in, in, in low dungeon could could he be put in the horseshoes up well we don't know could he though well he possibly could. He would have the, the magic to do so, but but why would he be doing it? Are we? Is there something wrong with this town? Why the fairies? Don't, I mean, as far as I'm aware, I mean, they're, they're mischievous. They have a little bit of a, 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 a prank every now and again. Um, but why a whole village? Well, obviously, so high dudgeon can win, and and that must hmm. be the prank. But this has Surely. been going on for a number of years many many years but why why has it all of a sudden just stepped up mm. because before it was just um, from what i understand from from what the villagers have said just before um it, it's just been they've been better well if you recall the, the the bad luck has really been pretty consistent for low dudgeon for the past 10 years oh. all started 10 years ago before that, then it was uh, the, the winds would maybe alternate, maybe a couple in a row for one town or the other, but it was always fairly even. Yeah. It's only in the last 10 years that something's happened. Now, you may also that's recall that one of the gossips was, was going on about something that she'd seen all those years ago that seemed to involve Renya. Um, and you're going to try and ask her about that before it all went completely pear-shaped and, and Renya fled for safety. 
um, clearly this this fairy individual seems to have some interest in Renya's cottage because he was watching it from a distance over across the meadow. Um, Surfed the Mighty saw him without a doubt. Uh, so that there seems to be some kind of link between all these things. What they might be, you don't know yet. I, 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 I will take a magical sensitivity roll for Mandelbrot, which is an insight roll for you, please. Right. Oof. It all rests on this Mandelbrot. <laughs> oh, don't don't <laughs> say that. No. Oh. <laughs> yes. I got, sorry, I got a 15 out of 30. 15 out of 30. That is a success. Um, this definitely, the, the horseshoes, the fact that it takes a considerable amount of willpower to actually get one of these things to detach, no amount of physical strength seems capable of prying them off. This all sort of smells rankly of the kind of mischievous fairy magic mm. fairies are notorious for getting up to. Um, it's rare that fairies, or what you know of them, are um deliberately deadly they're not like that they're very mischievous they're very capricious they like to cause elaborate um discomfort more than anything else and of course like anybody that's um so magically inclined and, and fused with this kind of power uh for them it comes as second nature oh sefer to so like says uh, I think somebody better go and talk to my 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 beloved my uh, sorry my ex beloved. I don't think it's wise me going there. Maybe somebody with a little bit more flair. Um. Well, somebody who's slightly mm. better with the the ladies. Maybe. Maybe not you, Mandelbrot. Sorry, not, not you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, oh, that's a hell of a slur, that is. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe Bascule, you tend I'd, to have a... I'd be more than happy to, to have a chat with her. I'm, I'm certain that my eloquence will, will win her over. Um, mm. All of the questions that we need answered. Just, just be careful. If you know what I mean, you know what I, I mean. Would, I would never fall in love with her. This hasn't happened more than twice. It's not the us. falling in love that's worrying me, Baskul. You know, keep your hands firmly in your pocket. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I, of course, of course, Surfy. You know me. I wouldn't. I wouldn't jeopardize. Okay, a ba um, a Bascule, I will take a willpower roll here, please. Oh, absolutely. Uh, fail, unless it was very easy. <laughs> okay, uh, right. Well, it, it, he, he's clearly impugning your character at this point. You know, he, he's suggesting that you have offered to go and speak to this woman that he clearly can't hold on to for love and the money, um, especially love. Um, and, and he's kind of impugning your character here. That that kind of, it, that's a slight on your honor. I think some petty revenge is gonna be called for. Honestly, it really hurts. And so something has to happen. Um, I'm with you there. <laughs> Sorry, animals. Um, so you probably see uh, so uh, Bascule's face kind of, <laughs> face just kind of twists into an evil Grinch-like grin. So yeah, I'll, I'll go, um, go talk to her. I would, uh, no stealing, keep my hands to myself. Good. Okay, is anybody going with uh, Bascule to uh, to speak to Renya? Uh, Mandelbrot will look, look at um, Yedney and say, so Yedney, my friend, would, <laughs> why, why, why don't you uh, yeah. accompany um, Bascule just to, <laughs> Because you are you're a man of, of, of many talents and many prowess. Uh, integrity. And yes. Your your honour is run your run away. Mm. Just run away, yeah. You bravely turned the chain and fled. Brave, brave for your deep. So yes. Why, why don't you go with, with, with Bascule as well? And I will stay with um Sephor Sephor. If, if that will put uh, Sephod's mind at ease, I'm I'm mm. more than happy to 
um, to accompany. So, so far, no word, shenanigans happen. So, did we know that there was some kind of charcoal boners in the woods behind the sawmill? Yes, you did. The uh, the charcoal burners are well known. They're, they're yeah. one of the ways that the village makes its money is charcoal production. So, yeah, the charcoal burners they're they're kind of the 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 blue collar industry here in Low Dutch. And yeah, you know all about them. Yeah, uh, I don't know what Mandelbrot was thinking. Do you, I I I just feel that I want to check out the the charcoal burners because I. You see, I've got it in my head that they were sort of like behind the sawmill in the woods. That's, that's, that's correct. That, yep, that's the direction to to, to get to where the, uh, the, the the current charcoal uh, lodges are. You would have to go past the sawmill, which is where Renya is, by the way. Mm. Is uh, she's taken refuge with Martwal and and her extensive family, and uh, you have to go past the sawmill over the bridge, which crosses the river Dudge into the woodlands and yeah, you'll be able to pick up the the uh the paths that will lead you over to where the charcoal burners are right i think um mandelbrock uh, but is there anything that you would like us to do in the in the village um or to go somewhere else if if surf mentions about the charcoal burners um mandelbrock's going to gently hold his arm and say Sir Ford, my friend we, there's something really important we can do here do you remember the tavern we were in why don't we go back there and see if you my friend can take the horseshoe we'll ask first we'll go to the tavern and say how long has that horseshoe been there or oh, we'll, we'll you know and then say I bet you can't pull it off tavern man and then see if he tries to pull it off and then you try and pull it off you um, just want me like, to pull horseshoes off walls. Yes. <laughs> because you, my friend, my large friend, you were amazing at the cottage. I didn't believe you had it in you, but clearly you do. So, you know, there's there's better things out, out there for you now. So come with me, my friend, and we should make a mighty man of you. So my far, fear, man. So far, too, it's quite... Um, prepared to do that he just suggests that we probably need to check in with the lady from the um blacksmith as well to see whether or not any of them any other horseshoes has been found and we'll mm. we'll pass the stage over to vascul and sir Gently. <laughs> okay all right then so you're you're heading down to the the low dudgeon sawmill uh so the sawmills, it's, it's a large sort of warehouse-like building with a, a, a big house built onto the side of it. Um, the, the main structure is given over to um, the, the sawing equipment, which uh, is all water-powered. It's connected to a series of big gears, water wheels, and it's got automated saw blades, rotary saws, planing equipment, all this kind of stuff. They are fully equipped for taking the chopped lumber from the forest, processing it into planks, poles, whatever they, they need to do. They have lathes and so forth. Um, the family that runs this is the Twollen family, and they always have. Um, Grandpa Twollen is the, the old white-haired, white-mustachioed, white-bearded patriarch, wears a pair of sort of brown... Um, so sort of twill dungarees, uh, always has a pipe stuck in his face at some point. Um, his son, um, he, he assists father. And then there's all the children as well. Um, they've actually lost count of how many children they, they really have. Probably around the 15 mark was where they, they just stopped counting. New was just sort of a peer every nine months or so. Um, no one's really sure why, but both uh, Pa and Martwell are very, very happy and very much in love. Um, so there's a massive brood of kids. Most of them, and the, oh, and they span all ages. Uh, 18, right down to uh, to the very, very youngest one. Um, they've even stopped giving them names. They, they just go by numbers and sort of designations in the pecking order. So very youngest, second youngest, third youngest, that kind of thing. Um, huge brood, very happy, very noisy, very joyful. And as you get to the sawmill, that's the kind of chaos that you see. Um, children running everywhere, playing, doing chores, helping, complaining. Um, 
the sawmill itself is not too busy at the moment. Um, they've done all the preparation and they're sort of wound down so that they can go and enjoy the games. And that's where some of the other kids and uh, Pa and Grandpa Twallen currently are. So the, the sawmill is normally a feverish hive of industry. But at the moment, all the machinery sort of, uh, it's all been disconnected and it will be fired up after the games are finished and uh, normal life kinds of resumed. But loads of activity around there. Lots of children playing and coming and going. And the lovely smell of home cooking, fresh bed being bread. This is like domestic heaven. Imagine the Waltons on steroids. And <laughs> that's the Twallen household that you've got. So, this is where Renya has uh, has actually taken refuge, and she will be found up at the the main house itself rather than at the uh, the workshop. Uh, Baskill nudge uh, Sir Yedney and say this it always brings me back to when I first started trying to juggle rats. Chaos everywhere. <laughs> but we better find this Renya, get things all uh, smoothed out so she's not uh, in, in concern any concerns with our our friends because you know. Sometimes Surfy can be a little strong. Um, yes, yes, you can be a little bit. Um, yes. So we're on the same page. Yeah, no, good, we're, we're, good, definitely good. On the same, we're definitely on the same page. We need to smooth the feathers to make sure that uh, there's no ill feelings from exactly from exactly. Renner to uh, to Yetney. Well, your approach is, uh, is spotted by the, uh, the Twallens' big, friendly, slobbery dog, who immediately starts barking, comes bounding up, wagging its tail, uh, trying to plaster everybody and everything with big slobbery kisses. Um, and of course, because the dog's barking, that attracts the children who sort of come running out, skipping around. Uh, some of you recognize the you know, juggler from the games the other day, and uh, so they're, they're very, very happy that uh, some of the entertainers come down to, to their warehouse, to their home. Have you come to juggle for us, mister? Say some of the kids. Can you juggle me? I could probably juggle the children, but who wants to see me juggle the dogs? All these dog? hands go about, about, about <laughs> the dogs. 15 hands flying to the air immediately. <laughs> me, 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 him, him, her, her, these I... bricks. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> if... Three of the, the lightest children step up, we will do some juggling. <laughs> Sir Yedney, maybe you could uh, work on uh, getting things well, solved. The, the, three, the three smallest and lightest children, um, they're, they're a bit cautious, but the, the, the bigger older ones sort of push them um, <laughs> into, into your vicinity. So uh, you, you know, have, you ever, have you ever tried juggling children before? This no, be but I assume you grab them by the ankle or, or the wrist as you're... <laughs> you know, um, maybe. <laughs> oh, you sure but about Baskiel, this? Baskiel can't say no to juggling. He's all about it's the show. A challenge. And sometimes it's more about how everything falls when you're juggling than the actual. Um, <sighs> do you like the juggling <laughs> roll? <laughs> well, the, 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 well, before we, we kind of get, yes, give me a juggling roll uh, before we get into that. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 the kids are, are egging you on. Horribly. They really are. I know this is a bad idea, but they're egging me on. I can't just ignore them. Here's my roll. Uh, what did we get? Basky or death? Come through yet? Nothing's come. Oh, there it is! It's a new show. I <laughs> uh, got an 11. It would give me a formidable. You got an 11 from a 32. That's a success. Okay, <laughs> you've you. You, you've taken a couple of them. Um, three would be too many. Two, two of the smallest ones, and you, and you, and you sort of manage to <laughs> kind of, kind of heft them from one, one arm to the other. Um, they're actually quite enjoying this. This is a fun ride, a great game. They're whooping and hollering with joy, um, but then the, the the jollity stops as a booming voice sounds out from from the main house. What on earth are you doing with my offspring? And Ma Twallen appears at the at the kitchen door. She's she's a huge bustling woman. Um, she's, gosh, she's she she's big. She fills the doorway. 
Um, she's wearing an apron, a summery kind of dress. Um, her hands are covered in flour. The apron's covered in all sorts of spills and stains, the usual sorts of things that you get from being a domestic goddess and a mother of 95. And uh, she's got her arms folded. And that look on her face that says, with me, you do not fuck. It's that kind of expression. And the folded arms and the tapping foot, you, you just know this is a formidable warrior in her own right. People who cross her do not live. Ha. <laughs> um, without words, I'm going to set down the children very gently <laughs> and, and kind of put my hands up. And once the kids are on the ground, I'll say, I'm bascule the deft. I was just I don't know who you are. You don't? You don't. Uh, I, I was just uh, bringing some entertainment and some uh, uh, apologies. Entertainment? Uh, it, it, it's, it's what I do. I've, I've never intentionally dropped anything while juggling. I saw what you were doing with those cats the other day. That was intentional, though. That's part of the act is that they, they all, the, well, the rats die. That's, I can't really edit that part out, to be fair. Oh, so you dispose of various bits of local wildlife and then you think it's okay to start using my children, do you? Children come here and the children come rushing up and she ropes them all in. There, 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 go inside, have an apple. Um, and she stands there folding her arms, glaring at the two of you. And, and uh, so Yedney, don't think you're not being glared at because you are. She's so quite, not she's quite careful of down glaring two people <laughs> simultaneously. The enemy's very being very careful not to make direct eye contact. <laughs> he's very doing that well. thing where in the in the dust with his foot. Yes, <laughs> yes. 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 So, so like the dust with his foot, rubbing his, his sore shoulder, and then um, when he it is needing to make sort of like seem to be making eye contact, he doesn't look at her. He just looks just like above her left shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't make eye contact. I'm so pleased that thing. you went up, Sir Yedney, and not, <laughs> not down at that point. <laughs> oh, Sir Yedney's a gentleman. <laughs> so Mark Wallen, in all her glory, uh, is, uh, standing there waiting for an explanation. Well, I, uh, I, 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 I'm. We we have a message for for Renya, um, and that that's why we're here. I um, I didn't mean to entertain your children. She kind of bristles at uh, your mention of Renya and seems to increase in size and stature. And she sort of, if it's more, if if it's possible to actually fold your arms more, she does so. It's it, it's quite a disturbing sight. It's a, it's a good message. It's one that uh, I, I think will we'll put her at ease. Mm -hmm. I, I, I saw the conflict the other night, you know, and I, I, my, my friend here, uh, Sir Yed Yedney, uh, it, it, and I thought it might put her at ease. Well, whatever you got to say to her, say to me. Um, well, I guess that, that works, I suppose. Yes, yes, that can work. It could work. Um, we we wanted to reassure her that our our large uh, massive friend isn't does, doesn't mean any any offense and and that he had a formal apology um, that we were going to recount since she might be more willing to hear the, the apology from us than from him you know it might um, we're sort of peacekeepers mm -hmm. in a way and and apologize uh, uh, yes I heard all about that listen. She comes over to you and leans in, still with her arms folded. Listen, she sort of half whispers very loudly. Renya's been through a lot. You understand? A lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I, it, was, it was a very difficult situation. I don't want her upset anymore. Do you understand? And she's nodding. Yeah, yes, that, that's why we came here. We, we wanted to make it so she would, would feel fine walking out, uh, outside of the house and our friend won't bother her with uh, any of his beautiful po poetry tree. Love poetry. Hmm. He has other good poetry, but I, I'll tell him not to say the one about sunshine. I'm not sure I like poetry. You might, you might feel differently if you heard poetry from him. 
yes well maybe i might maybe i might not hmm well i'll tell renya that you're here to apologize but i can't promise anything you know I, of course not. I, I mean, it's what we came here for is to deliver the message of apology. And if, if she's willing to hear it face to face, that would be uh, certainly better than just having her told well, to the I'll tell her. Okay, so what I would now like from um, Bastille and uh, say, yeah, me, uh, from one of you is an influence role, please. Now, you can augment this with uh, any appropriate passion that you may have. Um, I mean, I, I was trying to fulfill my take petty revenge with uh, trying to persuade Renya that Sir Fod didn't love her anymore, but I didn't really drop my line I wanted to use, so I don't know if that would really uh, apply you get, Well, you've got, you've got to get to Renya to actually do that, and at the moment That's you're true. dealing with Martois, so this is to get to Renya. So what you're trying to do here is influence Martois enough that she will go and broker the, the chat for you. Yeah, I don't think I have any passions that would help that or apply, I mean. Um, so here's my influence. Well, I don't, I don't think you do uh, necessarily. Um, how about Sir Yedney? Um, I mean, you are meticulously groomed. You could definitely I am meticulously that. groomed. Um, the, I've got loyalty to the Festive Fellows. I don't know if that would... Yeah, I'm not really... Well, actually, I, really I think that, that, that might work because you are trying to apologise on behalf... On behalf of, yeah. ...of, of, of Surface. So, yeah, I, I will allow that. Well, that will give you a plus 12 augment to your yes. influence roll. Which is a 36. So uh, that takes you up to Ooh. 48. 48. Okay. You can both try this, by the way. It's not limited to just one of you. Okay, well, I'll give my little 45 then. Could I use a point of luck to reverse mine? Uh, yes, you can. That will give you success. And I'm going to do that. Okay, so we've got a 19 and a 50. Right, the two of you, you duplicate Martoual and you explain you are, you're here to amend the mistakes that, that Sir had made. He's got wonderful love poetry. Uh, you didn't really, you weren't trying to hurt the children. They, they, they wanted you to entertain them. She sort of gives you one of those um, benefit of the doubt looks and sort of, well, they can be a bit of a handful, you know, uh, uh, especially fourth youngest. Always up to no good, aren't you? Click down the ear roll and, uh, well, you wait here. I'll see what I can do, but I'm making no promises. And she disappears inside. After a few minutes of you sort of standing there with children sort of egging you on, saying, you can still juggle that one. Go on, juggle me next. No, I'm not um, going to. I'll get in trouble. Martwallen's arm sort of appears out through the, the, the main door and a big beckoning finger sort of waggles at you in, uh, in your direction. Give Sir Yedney a nudge and then uh, walk yes, on. Um, we'll walk up and then um, just before Sir Yedney walks in, he'll be very careful to make sure his boots are as clean as possible when he walks in. He doesn't want to be traipsing any, any mud oh, into the house. Okay, what a wonderful idea. You are so um, interested in making sure that there is no uh, mud on your boots. I will have a hard perception roll to see if you step in the dog turd that the <laughs> dog has just deposited um, that you may miss. You have just made it. So you managed to step over the dog, the pile of dog mess, um, and you are you are you are um, Maya free as you, you enter the uh, the Twollen house. Um, the door leads into a huge, busy kitchen, massive, great kitchen table there, uh, big sort of range to one side. There's always something bubbling on the range. Uh, children playing around, uh, pies, all sorts of stuff, a real busy sort of homely kitchen. Um, in one corner is a rocking chair. And there's a, a, a small, really small, sort of wizened old lady sitting in the rocking chair, propelling herself by unknown means. Her feet don't touch the floor. Lord knows how she actually rocks, but she's rocking at quite a speed, knitting. Don't know what she's knitting, but there's a huge ball of wool and she's knitting feverishly and there's lots of knitting-y stuff coming off all of that. Um, 
Martwallen invites you in. Uh, plenty of places for you to sit. And she, she sort of asks you, sit down, be comfortable, welcome. I've told Renya she will be here in a minute. Tea, anybody? Oh, yes, And she's yes. got a huge, great teapot. Yes, thank you. That's very kind of you. She happily dishes up um, a couple of, uh, of teacups worth of incredibly strong builder's tea. Uh, you know this is strong stuff because the spoons stand up when you try to stir them. No amount of milk will stop this tea being dark. This oh. is the kind of tea with tannin levels that make you ganglia pop. I see. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, Baskill will kind of poke at his, his tea a bit and uh, do a few polite sips, but otherwise. Well, choose more than sips, I would say, but... Uh, yeah, a few a few polite bites then. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's been stewing for the past week or so. Ah. Fantastic meal, thank you very much. <laughs> Oh yeah, you're welcome. Let's get biscuits. Uh, she offers some uh, some biscuits as well, and she makes you feel uh, reasonably welcome while she busies herself around the kitchen. Um, after a few minutes, the the door to the parlour opens and Renya comes in. You've, you've met Renya before, obviously. Um, she's looking a bit wary. Uh, she's got her shawl sort of pulled up over her. Her, her hair, and she's giving you quite a, a wary look. She acknowledges you, comes in, um, sort of sits down opposite you at the table and looks from uh, from Syedney to Baskew and back again. And uh, so you've come to apologize, I'm told. Indeed, uh, we came with a message we thought would lift your spirits and make you feel a little bit more comfortable. We all felt bad after seeing uh, the events of last night. Uh, he was very hurtful. What's that? He was very hurtful. He is. Well, and that's so. kind of the problem with Surfy sometimes is he doesn't know the strength of his own muscles, but also his own words. And we know you felt perhaps a bit threatened. I mean, he has that love poetry and all, and, and he, he used some blunt words. We thought it might be comforting to know he's found somebody else and that he won't be bothering you anymore. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Yes, this beautiful young lady with flowing golden hair. It was... It, flowing golden hair? Yeah. And, and so we, we just thought we'd come oh. over... Oh, she, 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 I don't think I know anybody with flowing gold. <gasps> flowing golden hair. Is she with, she starts to say something, stops, looks around. Mark Ma Wallen is kind of leaning in and listening to all of this as well. Is she one of the dancers? I'll have a look the, the to the Um, I, I don't think so. She sort of offers a further description. Is she so tall? I think she was. Is a figure like that? And she, she runs through quite a detailed description of what she thinks this woman with the flowing blonde hair might be like. Uh, I'm just going to indulge and start agreeing with things after initially being hesitant. <laughs> yeah, about that height. Um, I might, you might be wrong on the weight a little bit, but it was pretty close, I think. It was from a distance, and Surfy just mostly told me about it. Renya's eyes are growing wider and wider. Her, her mouth is growing more and more open with shock. Mart Wallen has just started to take off her apron. Um, she's reached for a rolling pin, big one. Um, is it the same one? My dear, she says to Renya. Renya says, sounds like her. Why would she risk coming back? Oh! And the two women are now on their feet and show us, take us to her. We want to see her. She'll not get away with this twice, you know, says Wait, Mark Oliver. What, 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 get away with what? Is she going to kill Surfy? Surfy? Oh no, we're going to kill her. Well, damage her. Well, 
scare her. Well, we'll decide when we find her, says Mark Twollen. Um, Renya is now in absolute fury. Um, Come on, show me, show me, show me now. There's no time to waste. Did, did I say I saw that? Uh, it was Sir Yedney that, that uh, Wait, saw what? <laughs> Sir Yedney sort of like spits half, a, like politely spits half a, half a chunk of tea into the tea, to catch it in the teacup that he's, got, he's burying his face in. <laughs> Whilst well, half making like a small strangling noise. And, um, I think I saw her somewhere in the, in the fair. We'll lead them along. We, if, if there's a there's problem, no we can't. Fun to waste. The, the, the two women are now heading in that direction. They're, 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 come on, come on, quick! <laughs> the, the two, the, the, now, listen, we can't get too close. We want to make sure it's absolutely her before we get her. Now, we also want to see, you know, is Ranulf there? And they're, they're busy talking and gossiping away. You can't quite pick up what they're saying, but come on, come on, there's no time to waste! Sydney will Busty. slowly sort of follow with, with hopefully with Pascal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Pascal, and, 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 and then he was sort of like half whisper and say, I didn't think it would go quite like that. Um, Baskill's going to, after getting whispered, he's going to like whisper something back as uh, try, try and lead him somewhere. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to warn Surfy. And then um, I'm going to try and uh, maybe lose them as they're leading Sir Yedney, if Sir Yedney plays long course. Right, so you're, you're, you're going to try and sort of oh, duck out of sight and hopefully get out of having to... Uh... <laughs> oh no, I, I get out of it, but also find Sir Fod and warn him that somebody made a mess. Okay, well, <laughs> Surford and uh, Mandelbrot have gone back to the tavern. Uh, okay, so if you want to try and duck out of this, I am going to ask for a... Uh, I think this is going to be a formidable stealth roll. So you're looking at half your normal stealth. Um, because I'm trying to save Surfy from potential destruction, would I be able to add my passion for loyalty to Festive Fellows? Oh, absolutely not. No, this is completely the antithesis of, uh, of That's that. fair. However, fair. you do have take petty revenge. So I think I might... Al no, no, I don't know. no, I'm yeah. not, not going to allow an augment for that. Yep, I'm with you there. Here is my stealth. Got your stealthy. Um, you ain't going anywhere, mister. <laughs> You do have your luck your look points yeah, refreshed. So yeah, I only have one left though. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna save it. Okay. Oh. And get grabbed right. by the you, wrist you, and pulled back you, in. You try you, you, you try to just sort of a uh, duck duck it into this sort of the, the back entrance to the tavern as you're going past, but Mart Wallen's sturdy hand on your collar guides you back to where you need to be and uh, she she whispers this woman did she say if she was from the city of is by any chance um, I, I i don't recall um i Sephel, i don't believe Sephel told me anything about this, that. Oh, she's she's sort of half whispering this to uh oh, she, okay no, she that's fine. holds him back so that he can't get away uh, 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 I, 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 I don't think he said anything about where she's from, just where they'd live together forever. Well, it has to be her. It has to be. And now the two of them are storming, like driven spirits of vengeance towards the Midsummer Games field, dragging poor Sir Yedney and Bascule in tow. Meanwhile in the town, so, Bascule, uh, so Mandelbrot and uh, Serpent, uh, not that long after you beat up uh, Black Tam Shandy and his charcoal thugs in there. So they, they kind of cleared up the mess and uh, the, uh, the innkeeper has gone for a bit of a lie down after all that excitement, which means that his wife is, is there sort of attending the bar. And a few more customers have come in from uh, watching the games. It's sort of getting on quite late into the afternoon. Susts are beginning to build. People want the strong apple cider that they specialise in. So the bar's beginning to sort of fill up a bit. 
of course, when she sees you, uh, her eyes kind of melt and she, she, goes, uh, she, she goes into full flirt mode. Uh, uh, Sephard sort of like tries not to sort of like um, gain her attention or try, he's trying desperately not to give any of the wrong idea he doesn't want. Yeah, too late for that. Yes, I thought it might be. <laughs> Do you need a roll or something? <laughs> no, I don't need a roll for that. I'm quite happy. Uh, it's, it, she, she's... Uh, She's going to flirt with you no matter what. She uh, she very much. But I'm not falling in love you, easily. You were helping her with her bucket. <laughs> yes. Earlier. Um, so uh, yeah, she's. Uh, I think she's I made that role. Good. I think I made that role in the last. <laughs> yeah. So um, so far then, um, Mandelbrot, we will go in and I'll, I'll try to locate this um, this upside down horseshoe that Mandelbrot's been going on. At. You, you did actually see it last time. So it's behind the bar. The, 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 the counter for the bar, big, long, wooden sort of trestle more than anything else. Uh, behind the bar, there are shelves that have got various bottles of spirits, cordials, that sort of stuff on there, and lots of tankards and, and so on. And just above the bar, there's uh, just above the shelves, there's a sort of a lintel uh, that, that's supporting the ceiling. And you can just see the horseshoe upside down down the wrong way up um, just sort of poking down behind this lintel so it's not direct sight you'd actually have to be on the other side of the counter to see it properly but you can see where it is um, it's it's too high up for her to reach it it's too high up for really uh, anybody except a prodigious size and reach to be able to to, to reach it so Sir Ford, um will approach um, the lady and sort of like prop up the bar and attract her attention <laughs> just imagine this this huge great mustachioed strongman nonchalantly propping up a bar the bar's creaking and bowing yeah. in the middle <laughs> all, all the tankards are slowly, slowly sliding, sliding. <laughs> and he, as, he'll just sort of like gravity well. he'll sort of like um, catch her eye and hopefully she will uh, come, come a, across and take his oh, order. Oh, she, she, she was she was talking with uh, with one of the other regulars. Sees you come in, sort of place your elbow at the bar. The bar sort of lowers, and, and because she's sort of half perched on the bar herself, it causes her to slide in your direction more than anything else. <laughs> so she she kind of oh hello again, so soon. Oh, you couldn't keep away, could you, you naughty thing? Uh, I, I I was um, hoping you might be able to. Oh, so was I. Believe me, I've been hoping uh, to do uh, or let me have a favour. Oh, uh, let you have it? Would you 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 want to? Yes, a favour. Oh, a favour. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, I I, yes, I you, you were so helpful uh, earlier. There is something in this place that I have seen that. I really want to get my hands on and and I just wondered whether or not we could come to some sort of a an agreement someone catches her as she faints pops <laughs> her back up again and uh, oh really oh yeah oh. I, she's looking around to make sure her husband's not watching uh, of course I, I I don't want you to do this for nothing I have, I have written you something that I thought you might like, and written what in words? Uh, yeah, and I'm quite happy to read instructions. These. Uh, uh, no, uh, I like to indulge in as well as playing the panpipes. I like to indulge in. Poem. Never heard of them called that before. But she... Pen. I, I, I like to write poetry and I've written something for you and I'm willing to let you hear it in exchange for me just coming round the the opposite side of the counter and removing that that horseshoe. Okay then, I think we better have that poetry roll but you definitely have to, have you got a poem prepared? I certainly have. 
skies are blue and roses are red our love will last from long, long walks to a feather bed that's it <laughs> i thought it I'll had i tell you what i, I thought it had each, each should be worried <laughs> I, th I think it's sort of like played on our heartstrings for what she ho is hoping to get <laughs> what have we played on something okay she's incredibly touched by this uh you you may give me a role and uh i'm gonna give that an easy grade so it's, it, it's half half again this, oh sorry this is uh let's see you have got uh, i've got love poetry as a passion but i've got poetry as an art as well you give me poetry as an art and it's an easy role there we go oh. <laughs> um, hang on okay. hang on that, <laughs> yeah go on <laughs> a, a luck point flipping that will give you a uh, a success i i'm certainly going to use a luck point um on that okay okay serford um, realizes how important this is at this point and hey. feels that he should be supporting the party and not <laughs> hey. uh, i think the party is all the help we can bloody get <laughs> yeah. so, a, a tear has sprung to her eye she's hugely touched by this th th this wonderful piece of doggerel that you have uh, have just produced she's not so sure about the whole blue skies bits um she's not big on metaphor really but she gets the sentiment but the she, feather bed clinched it I th the feather bed <laughs> clinched it. she's very touched and would certainly like to be by you um lots um but it, yeah uh, yes what, what what is it that she can do for you um uh, could i uh i hope you no like that ever, uh, no one's ever, ever said anything like that to me before not even my husband and uh, he sort of like reaches out his uh, crooked Bastard. finger like that and just puts it underneath her chin and just lifts it up and says, he ought to do it more to you. I really do think. Right poetry, that is. Um, can I come round now and get my hands on what I wanted? She's already lifted the hatch for you to come <laughs> through. He had this sort of like saunter through and sort of like squeeze past her through that narrow gap oh yeah there's a little squeezing going on there, is it like a, can I decide <laughs> yeah, can I is, it, is it front front oh most yeah, definitely so back front no oh. it's front front yeah. definitely and you can this can't be avoided and you there's a definite squeak <laughs> this, is like, this is like tectonic plates in love. Yeah. tectonic plates of love uh, yeah, and one, once I've sort of like um, squeezed past her, um, causing a minimum amount of friction as possible, I will then go to the um, horseshoe and try to remove it for Mandelbrot, okay. who's probably just looking, watching me, and absolutely uh, amazed yeah. by Mandelbrot my... Mandelbrot, at the moment, his jaw is slightly open. <laughs> he's like... And, and, and he's just... He's, he's aghast. Yeah. I think you need a, a hydraulic jack to put your jaw back in place. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you you have yeah, you you're in full sight of the of the horseshoe. So there it is. It's fixed to the wall uh, above the shelves behind the bar. Uh, clearly, exactly the same as the other. Same design, slightly rusty. You can see the maker's mark uh, that, that Natter put there all those those years ago on there. So yeah, you you're you're, you're definitely you're you're you're, you're probably at about forehead level in with uh with the horseshoe you, you can uh okay you're, you're pretty you're a pretty tall chap so yeah. uh yeah it's easy yeah. enough for you to sort of reach up yeah but it won't come off it's uh you you, you put a fair amount of force there and it is stuck just like all the rest of them have been i have this vision that i sort of like look around and um, the woman's sort of like holding my legs for support or something like you hold a ladder or something to sort of... It's it, it kind of wrapped around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lovingly like a dog hunting. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you don't get, you're not getting your foot away from here, really. 
really easily. No, and it, so, um, yeah, she was, uh, she was clinging onto you. So, so far, to sort of like turn round, it's still with the young lady or the lady wrapped around him. So, like, turn around to Amanda Brown and says, It won't come off. <laughs> well, have you put a bit of passion into it like you did before? Or maybe, maybe <laughs> try. Why don't you raise this lady up here and see if she has the willpower to pull it off herself? I've given it a right good tug, but it seems to be absolutely... Uh, it's not. No. I, I, I turn no. I turn round to the... the um, what, what's the lady's name? I forget. Uh, the lady's name, she does have one. She... I feel that I should, you know, um, we're building up a relationship here, I think. And I do have eloquence, which I think is... Absolutely, you do. Um, 76. <laughs> the Hill Hog. I'm not even sure. Yet. She, I'm sure that she has... Get Ursula. Ursula. Sure Ursula. Ursula um, Le Guin, that's who she, it is. She, she, you, you, you can pick up Ursula and you can hold her... Uh, it, in front of the horseshoe, I am going to let you channel your willpower through Ursula, aided by the magical capabilities of Mandelbrot standing uh, behind you. We're doomed. You, we're doomed. <laughs> you, you, you doomed can, I tell you. We, we're going to have a full channeling of wills to see if we can shift this horseshoe. Okay, then. Um, so I've, we'll, we'll take as a base uh, Surford's willpower of 36. 36. And um, I think uh, Medivac, we can augment that with um, Mandelbrot's Believe in Destiny. Uh, believe in Destiny, so that will be 15. No, it'll be 16. It's 75, oh, 16. so you round up. Yeah. Round up, sorry, yeah. Cool. So that takes me up to 52. And it it, is, is Ursula doing anything? Is she adding anything? To um, well, well, she's one sort of... I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll, what, what are you at? 60? I'm at 52 at the moment. 52. We'll round that up to 60 for her. So you've got a 60% chance. Okay, then. Um, so hang on. Um, but, but let's take that up to there. Um, and then I will roll it. 60% chance. Here's my willpower. Whoa! Stop. Oh! <laughs> oh okay. my goodness. Good roll. Yes. Okay, um, Ursula says, oh, I'm going all tangly as she <laughs> she takes hold of the, uh, the horseshoe. Um, and... You, I've just got my, my you, arms wrapped you, 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 Yeah, you go. I'm, my face so, slightly to one side as well. Yeah, it's an interesting strategic position. Um, you, 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 you encourage her to wiggle it about a bit. Um, and oh, it, it's it's coming off. It's coming. And, and then there's a... And it comes off the yeah. wall. And um, you, you almost fall back with the with the force that uh, this is. Fortunately, you've got the counter in the way to brace your fall. Yeah. Um, and uh, Ursula is holding quite triumphantly the horseshoe in both hands. Um, there's a sort of a, a, a white patch now on the wall where that horseshoe, when there's years of accumulated grime behind mm. it. Uh, but yes, it has, it has appeared. So no, Mandelbrot will look at um, at Sephiroth and say, "To Victor, go the spoils. Give the lady a kiss. Well done, that lady." She somehow turned round in your arms, and she's puckering up for a, a big sloppy one. And it, she, he'll he, he'll sort of like gently uh, bring two fingers and place it on his lips, and then turns round and this places it on hers lips and this then leans towards her and says let's not spoil and later an encounter I'm later on i'm still tingling she just, says as you lower her gently to the floor i just lower her slowly sliding down and then sister says uh. you have been so you have been so good and kind and she he'll say Urs. he'll go to walk off and then he'll go Ursula yes 
Who put expectantly. Who put the horseshoe there? I don't know. I don't care. Right. Let's run away together. Oh, wait. I hate him, you know. He's a fiend. Wait. We need to make this right. Does this, we'll take our time, but no matter what happens, I will remember this moment fondly for some time to come. And sure. here, and he'll slow as he goes through the bar. He he'll slowly oh. lower the hatch, making sure that she's still on the opposite she's side. She's still on the, the opposite <laughs> side, and that lets you make a a um, a discreet getaway. Just just uh, before it so, standing there with kind of mugs paused halfway up to their lips, going. <laughs> uh, just just before it does go, uh, Mandelbottle will say, "So did you get? Did she give you the shoe?" She did, yes. You have the shoe in your yeah. in your possession. There you are. One really well done, my friend. I couldn't have done it better myself. You are astounding. Okay. So, you have the horseshoe from the tavern. Meanwhile, um, the, the, the Renya <laughs> and Swollen <laughs> bench party have arrived at Midsummer Meadow. Um, do either Baskiel or Siedney want to try and find out exactly what it is that's got Renya so vengeful and excited? You have a yes. little time to try and do a, as you sort of been forced to, to point this, this blonde haired woman of incredible outstanding beauty out. Well, why, do you, why do you hate her so much that you're going to, to, to injure her? It's not Renya that answers that question. It's Twollen uh, that, uh, that that tells you a, a little bit of history. Um, uh, years ago, when Renya was blissfully, happily married to her childhood sweetheart, Ronolf, up he went and left with a floozy that came to the Midsummer Games 10 years ago to the very day. Ten years to the day, he f he ran off with a dancer from Is. She'd come to dance at the games as just as one of the entertainers. Um, that they, they they had a special tent, you know, and the men were paying money to go in and watch them dancing in the tent. And there were rumours about what went on in the tent by the dancers, and it wasn't all dancing, they can tell you that. And afterwards, uh, Ronolf left with the, uh, the, that, that troop, never to be seen again. Renu was utterly heartbroken. Um, they'd only been married uh, less than a year, and uh, they'd been blissfully in love, and suddenly he'd had his head turned by this dancing girl of dubious charms and moral character. And so, she has been dwelling on this ever since. And if this dancer has suddenly returned, one, maybe Ronolf is with her. Two, there's a chance to find out where Ronolf is and maybe get some revenge on the floozy. So that's why they want to find her so badly. Throughout that explanation, uh, Basquiat would be getting more uh, animated and angry, but it's, it's certainly a deceit thing on his end. I mean, no, he, dancers? I, he didn't go in, in, in with a, the, the, that must have been how they met, was he went to that oh, awful tent. Uh, you know, you're right, I I don't even know this lady, and I'm I'm with you guys. It's, this, this is an awful, evil thing, and she needs to be punished. Uh, you know, but if we're all here in this one spot looking, and she's back in town, uh, may the gods curse her name, uh, we might be able to find her more easily and run off if he's here if uh we we split up into groups and we can report back here to each other maybe that's not a bad idea very well okay i'll go with you says mart wallum and prods you in the chest um and <laughs> so Yedney, you go with renium I wouldn't have it any other way. That's that's the, the way we'll keep on track with this. We're going to find yeah, her. Renya, of course, will know this woman anyway. Um, her, 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 her features are burned into her psyche 
So uh, yes, she will have uh, no problem spotting her. But whereabouts did you see her exactly again? Um, I, I believe it was Sir Yedney who saw. Well, I didn't see her. It was Sephel who described her. Um, I think it was over, and then he sort of like just picks a random direction. Okay. <laughs> yep. That way. <laughs> right, come on, says Renya, and she's pulling you in that direction, which uh, it just happens to be where the, where the games are, are taking place. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's the, the foot wrestling contest is in full okay. swing, which is like arm wrestling, but with feet. Makes sense. To, uh, don't ask me how it works. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but it's yeah, the, the foot wrestling comedy. But there's a, there are plenty of women there watching the foot wrestling. There are even some taking part. Um, but there's nobody that matches the, the, this description that has just been made up. Which and and Renya is sort of scouring the faces. Doesn't see her. Well, of course, if she's a dancer, then then. Where's the tent? There must be a tent. They came with a tent, a big one, bright red it was, with the red lamp outside. I'll never forget it. That's, that, that's very true. Um, well, some of the tents are over this way, and then he will point to in the direction towards where the um, tents indeed, are. Indeed, there are lo lots of tents set up. There are lots of tents there. So perhaps, perhaps we should go over there and have a look for, for, this, for this tent with the, with the red light. And she's off in that general direction, scouring, sort of opening flaps, looking in, trying to find this, this mythical dancer. Uh, nobody is to be seen. And of course, she's also looking for Ronolf as well. Yes, of course. Um, so, 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 so Yedney, because obviously he's never seen Ronolf, he said, so to, to, to assist you looking for um, um, Ronolf, would you mind awfully if you give me a rough description of him so I know who to, to look out for? Uh, she, she describes what he looked like. He, he, he was tall, broad shouldered, uh, good looking. He had sort of sandy hair, blue eyes, uh, cornflower blue eyes, um, a sort of a, he could match the description of, of any sort of strapping young decent looking lad um, and the more she's talking about him the more the tears are beginning to well up in her eyes and and, and before long she she's actually more like a quivering wreck and oh. she just has to stop as she begins to absolutely unload all the emotion so he will um sort of like give her with his left arm because his right arm's still in the sling and so not without trying to activate his his collarbone which is no longer yep. in existence he'll try and um comfort him to, oh, oh oh there there um Perhaps we should we should pause for a moment and and, and seek some sort of light refreshment, um, and to, to, to settle your nerves um, and your state, and then we can potentially resume. There, there is a lemonade stall nearby with some little stools where you can you can sit down. She can sort of recover her composure. Yes. Uh, she she she's crying still and so on. She thanks you for for being so understanding. And she more or less repeats the story that Mar Twollen has told to uh, to Basque. You know, she and Ronald were in love um, ten years ago. They were married in the autumn of the year before, um, and uh, then yeah, that year, the games. It was when everything started to go wrong. It's the first year that that Low Dudgeon lost, and Ronald, his head was turned by this dancer. She pleaded with him. She was on her knees begging him not to go and the last she saw of him he was sitting next to that trollop and worse words are used but this is a family channel um so it, 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 she, she saw him sitting next to her in the carriage as they rattled up the road to high dudgeon and she never saw him again did you um see any other sort of um odd or strange people around at that time and then he was like give the rough description of that the fairy that we've seen. Um, so okay. Have you seen anyone like like that? Did you happen to see anyone like that around around that time? Um, oh, or, right. or not? Uh, um, or heard of anyone who who saw that sort of a sort of other person? Okay, Perhaps. you can give me an insight roll, please. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, it's a 44 and a 41 standard. Right. So you, you've actually made that at, uh, at an easy grade as well. As you begin to describe the fairy that you saw, um, she turns and looks at you with a very, very strange expression. And say that again. So, so, so the Edney will start to say that again, give the description again. <gasps> and her hands fly out to her mouth. She lets out a yelp. Elias! Sorry, who? She then sort of goes very quiet and glances around. His, his name is Elias. Where, where, where did you see him? It's in in low, the centre of Lodudgeon. Um, oh, no. When? Um, when? Um, this afternoon. This afternoon. Tears are beginning to brim in her eyes. She, she's now scanning the crowd desperately. Why? why how, what's, how, how long ago? It's, it's just earlier today. Why? Um, what's, what's the matter? Ah. Is, is it bad? You can tell from the look in her eyes that there is something very, very wrong and clearly involving this Elias that uh, that you have just described to her. Um, if you want to try and get any more out of her, uh, this is going to be a formidable influence role. Um, yes, he, he, he will attempt to, um, being as courteous as, as, as he possibly can. So I'm hoping to sort of... Um, possibly augment it with with his courtesy role um absolutely i and, think that's and as that's sensitive as, he, yep. as, as sensitive as he can um yep. so that's definitely a, so you get plus 14 for you oh, courtesy. brilliant oh no not 124 no um there you go on the influence role so that's okay that's 31. 31 good role all right um it takes a couple of glasses of lemonade, lots of low encouraging words, lots of listening, and being as polite and gentle as you can. This is the full chivalric works. Yes. This is how you deal, this is how a knight deals with a maiden clearly in distress. Okay, you coax out of, piece by piece, you coax out of uh, Renya, Something that happened 11 years ago, not 10, but 11 years. Okay. Um, you guess you're not getting the full story, but you've got enough to kind of get the drift of it. Um, she was in the woods before the game started. Uh, she she might have been taking a bath in the river or she might have been, but she can't remember what she was doing. She came across somebody. He It seemed he was clothed in sunlight, the most beautiful man she'd ever seen. And he paid her compliments. She paid compliments back. They dallied. Nothing more than that. They, 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 they were friends. They were friends for a couple of long, hot, lazy summer days before the games began. Then when the games began, she went back to encourage her village and Ronolf, her, her childhood sweetheart, who was taking part in several of those contests, and she never saw Elias again. Um, she went to look for him at the old yew tree, which is where they'd met for those two lazy days of bliss and sort of, <laughs> there was nothing to it, really. There was nothing. I, no, I, no, I didn't, we, we kissed, that was all. Of course not, no. But he never that's came. Fine. He never appeared. And suddenly she's beginning to piece together that there may be something more to what's going on here. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, so Yedney will um, give us sort of like a quick half glance around, um, and then sort of like lean in a little bit more in a kind of sort of like a conspirator, conspiritual way, and say mm -hmm. um, that there is something that is that is happening um, that is very odd. Um, that um, my friends and I have, uh, or my fellows and I have, have noticed um, happening to, to Low Dudgeon. Um, everyone in the town, in the village, seems to be having awful bad luck, um, and and it seems to be linked to um, a, a number of horseshoes that we've found scattered around. Um, but they're all upside down, which everybody knows is is. And of course, she knows she knows about. 
and she knows about the horseshoe above her own and lintel. She knows about the, yes, yeah, yes, and of, of course, one was above above your lintel. So we've been quietly, um, my fellows and I have been quietly like trying to find them and, and, and remove them to hopefully get rid of this spell of of, of bad luck on on the dungeon. But this is this is secret because if people but everyone then... knew, it would cause upset. It's all my fault. No, 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 it's not your fault. No, it can't be. No, I'm sure it's not. That's that's why Ronolf left. It's all my fault. No, I've been no, no, cursed. No, 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 he cursed me because I wouldn't be with him and he's cursed me and it's all my fault. And the tears start <laughs> again. And this time they're heavier and these are racking sobs. And people are turning to look now. Oh dear. You're, you're uh, kind of having to... <laughs> there, there. <laughs> sure, it's fine. It'll be much better soon. Um, so, so, so Yedney will sort of um, say, perhaps we should um, go and try and find Martwallen. Um, and, and, and that's a at this pretty point. good idea. And you, you have to lead her away. Yes. She's very gentle and carefully, of course. And, of, of, Absolutely, of course. So Baskill and Martwell, and you kind of headed back into into the village to uh, sort of split up. Uh, he broke her heart, you know, Ronolf broke it in two, running off with that strumpet. Pure evil. People who do that, it's just, I can't trust people who would break hearts. I heart saw like that. the damage done, you know, and every man, and of course, every man ever since, knowing that Ronolf was out of the way, thinking, oh, there we are. She'll be wanting someone else just like that. Well, she's not like that. I can tell you now, she's a pure girl, pure of heart. Yes, she is. And, you know, shit, they keep, oh, they never stop. There was that blacksmith. There was the baker. There was the... Simmons, yes, that's. I mean, he was okay. He was very, he was very nice. He, he, he was. I liked him. I liked him, but her heart is just not in it anymore. She dare not trust men, and I don't, I don't blame her either. What she's been through, poor girl. I, I so agree. where is she? Where is the strumpet? Now, listen. If we see her, I suggest. You go and get a sack from the bakers, a big one. Then what we'll do is we'll sort of get her in the sack. We'll take her back to the workshop, put her in one of the, yes, well, maybe we could put her in one of the barrels and then I could set one of the saws going and we, we can give her a scare all right. What do you think, eh? Uh, give me uh, a petty uh, revenge roll. <laughs> ha ha. <laughs> uh, 49 of 70. That sounds fantastic. It, you it couldn't come like up with a better plan. Very deserving. <laughs> it, I think perhaps, if, if they're not in town, I know Surfy better than anybody, especially his, his dalliances with ladies. He always likes to try and bring them somewhere romantic, like um, a, a, a well, perhaps? Do you guys have a well in this town? Oh, yeah, you can see the, the well is, you're not that far from it. It's uh, not far from uh, where the tavern is. And funnily enough, um, Surford and, ba uh, and Mandelbrot are just coming out of the tavern. Um, ha has she seen Surford? Yes, she sees Surford and she sees Mandelbrot and she doesn't see the blonde-haired strumpet from Is. So she's kind of looking around and scowling. Well, there's your friend. Where's the hussy? Um, well, if, if you keep an eye out in case she's trying to, you know, exit the, the tavern sneakily, you know, um, I'll, I'll go ask I'll Sir go Fod. and look in yeah. there. She won't get away. I'll have a word with Ursula. I'll make sure she doesn't get out. And yeah, she, yeah. Martwell, and heads into the tavern. Sleeves rolled up. Rolling pin tucked into a penny at the back. Uh, with her kind of gone in, I want to quickly go up to Sir Fod and Mandelbrot, um, stuttering um, uh, over whatever they say. Hello, oh, guys, we got a problem. We I made a I made an entire mess out of the situation. Who's I, I, that? I thought I was going. To... Who's that? Who Who's that, that woman you were with? Um, that's uh, Mark Twell, and she's the one uh, hosting your your beloved. Um, 
and, but um, so I tried to clear things up. It didn't work. Um, and now she thinks that you're uh, dating a, an evil lady with blonde hair that's going to be murdered, but that is stealing love and hearts. And I'm I'm not <sighs> dating anybody with blonde hair. I know, I know. I was just trying to, I was just trying to fix the situation. I and I thought that would fix it if she didn't think that you were after her. But then it kind of spiraled out of control. Now they're searching for a lady to murder. And did you tell her that I was still in love with her? Never quite got that far. <laughs> I, I didn't say that specifically. Right. I may have said some things that would uh, and it wasn't my intention of course but that might have led her to believe that you weren't interested in her that'd be crazy of her to take it that way i was just trying to smooth things over you're not gonna hit me are you surfing not without due warning thank you well thank you for that i guess warning. um no <laughs> i just realized that warning bang <laughs> <laughs> and then I can have surprise and do knockout blow. <laughs> Is it, um, so that's that's what's going on. Um, who's and, uh, this? Who's this blonde hair? I don't know. I was just they they. I think Sir Yedney said something about the blonde lady. Um, he's trying. He's just trying to work with what I was saying. He's not as smooth as me. Sometimes you're not talking about the person I met. That was all sparkly. Was that a lady? Well, yeah, blonde hair. Oh, then they're gonna kill that person. Oh. And well, I mean, if if it's the right person, that they, they kind of deserve it. But um, um, maybe we should go save. You said Ursula. Ursula's the tavern lady. Fine lady. Oh, uh, uh, no, it's someone uh, beautiful. Uh, well, the blonde man. Uh, yeah, we, we should maybe find him or her before she or they. I have a funniest feeling, Baskell. You've made this probably twice as bad as what the situation was. Yes, uh, would... but it's been worse. To, to be fair, there, there is a positive here. Look what we have. I hold up the, <laughs> the horseshoe. <laughs> Please tell me you didn't juggle with it, her children. <laughs> that is a preposterous you I'm children I wouldn't even know where to start like the ankles or, I, actually you, 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 you've got a pretty good idea where you'd start yeah. Yeah. You'd, you'd practice yeah I might be lying to um, I, 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 well we at least we know that Renya is out of the house and she's not hiding from you anymore where That's is she good. She's coming she's, in your direction with uh, Siedney, actually. She's very red-eyed. She looks very upset. What did he do? Um, uh, I'll um, straighten my leopard skin leotard if I have it on. <laughs> no, you're just in your normal street. Oh, drat. <laughs> uh, uh, walking around in your, in your leotard <laughs> would not be a good idea right now. I do oh, have right, one on my know. equipment list, just so people know. Oh, you do, yeah. yeah it's, it's way too small. <laughs> yeah. In all the right places. It's uh, a little off the shoulder, the leopard skin leotard. It's, uh, uh, as... it, 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 yeah, imagine a... Yeah. Yeah. It's imagine imagine no more. Around. Imagine no more. <laughs> I'll just sort of like Some wipe... things cannot be unseen. <laughs> I'll wipe the um, sweat off the top of my um, shiny head as he sees his ex-beloved um, coming towards them and try to look inquiring at Sir Jedney, who seems to have made this person cry. <laughs> yes, so um, upon arrival, um, Sir Jedney uh, with Sir Jedney and, uh, and Renya, um so so yet he's sort of um walking with with Renya and he's got his, his left arm around sort of like her shoulder gin gingerly sort of in a polite sort of um guiding way and, and slightly comforting uh, because obviously she's she's absolutely distraught um and seeing seeing the the the, uh, the the other fellows um he says ah perhaps um we can we can 
very, um, explain the situation um, to them. Um, and then seeing Sephort, he kind of like quickly goes, and then um, <laughs> <laughs> he, he kind of like gives one of the a startled face because he was hoping that Sephort wouldn't have been there at that point, but he is. So we're going to go with it. Um, <laughs> and, and then arriving, um, he says, "Ah, have have we managed to?" Uh, Ah, oh, Pascal, did you did you manage to find the um that woman? No, no. No? Okay. Okay. Well, um we may have um discovered something else. Um that's Barkley a fellow. Um is is, is somewhat more involved in this situation than, 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 than we thought. Renya asks um, Surford to describe who he saw. Well, it was all, sh he was shimmery and he caught the sunlight like the oil that glistens off my body and that sort of shimmery and he had long blondish hair and he smelt of lavender, I think. It lavender? Was. <laughs> yeah. It was him. Yeah. It was Elias. Elias? Elias. Is he your betrothed? No. No. <laughs> so it does set off Siri. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a minute. So the word betrothed, that's just what I was thinking. theory. That's curious. I, I think you yeah. heard it tell us all about it. I don't know. It's, it's I don't know why. It's about his search history now. <laughs> yeah. Yes. In Will's theory, a it very, said, very close. It said what came up on the screen was off Siri. It was sounded as if it, I wanted to turn it off for some other reason, ah. which I would never do. Um, can't live without Siri. Um, so okay. this was her, her, her be somebody owed that hurt her a great deal, isn't it? Is that? Okay. What What are you going to do with Renya? She She is in a real state now. I mean, this this is, is she is clearly very very distraught by all these revelations. That first of all, that the woman that ran off with her husband may have come back, even though she hasn't. But more distraught about the, the appearance of this Elias person where, where do you want to go to talk to her about this let, let, let us take her back to her cottage where she where she lives and then she'll be more calm in a in a natural environment that she, she grew up in so that would be the best thing for her i think and then we can find out more about this glowy person do, does she, um, so, so far, just wants to ask whether or not she knows where um, Elias lived? Was he sort of like visiting the place or did he have um, an abode here in Lower Dungeons? Okay. You go back to, uh, you take Renya back to her cottage. You, you sit in the, the small little parlour, um, try and calm her down, um, talk gently and so forth. And you have lots of apologies about all the misunderstandings and so forth. So to get her to open up to you, uh, she's already opened up a little bit to see Edney. Um, but I'm going to call for four roles here. This is a... Uh, a test, the Mithras test that we're going to run, um, requires four rolls. Um, a success scores you 25 points, critical scores you 50, failure scores you nothing, and a fumble will take 25 off your total. You're trying to score as many as possible over the course of the next 30 minutes as you try to get Renya to open up and talk more freely about exactly what happened. Now, she's reluctant to do so. So she's going to have some roles of her own that will sort of resist the ones that you're going to be making. Um, so what we're going to start with is a customs role to sort of frame the, sort of introduce the subject in a way that will get her amenable to talking about it. Then we're going to have an influence role. And that's set to try and get the truth from her, uh, piece by piece. An insight role to spot those little times where she tries to change the subject or 
um, avoid saying anything that might be a bit too incriminatory, and then a willpower role to overcome her natural obstinacy. So each of you will make one of these roles. It's up to you to decide who's going to make which one, and I will keep the tally. I'm then going to make some roles for Renya to see what the final outcome will be. Do, do we all have to take a, a, a go at the role? Because... Absolutely you do. Right, yes. because I, I'm a bit disappointed that Braun's not on there, because I would just like to say <laughs> yeah, that to the party yeah. now. Yeah. This isn't really one for Braun. I don't <laughs> well, le le leaning over you with a raised fist and the threat, that that's, yeah, I think that's guaranteed to make a clam up forever. Uh, I'll probably um, go... For do you want us to decide which role we're going to go for? You you decide which roles you well, want to make. Well, I'm I'm very knowledgeable about customs, about what various customs, what people do. Um, I think we yes. probably all are. Yeah, I was just thinking that same thing. <laughs> about oh, customs. Yeah. Okay, but... Well, well, I'm also very willful because my happy go lucky nature. I'm, I'm not. Very I'm, I'm not very willful at all because I fall in love very easily. Um, you see, can... you see what my influence is like. I mean, if I can augment it with brawn, I'm fine. <laughs> uh, <no. laughs> but I think that's more intimidation <laughs> rather than anything. Um, what, what was the willpower, customs, customs, it was an insight, customs, it? influence, insight, willpower. I was going to suggest that perhaps Basque will take insight since he mm. likes to catch people when they're wrong um, and, and stew on it. I think that's a good idea. I mean, in influence I could do as as almost as well as willpower. I think because I, I do like to influence the people that I'm with. I'm wondering if your willpower, Mandelbrot, will be since you dabble in magic. I don't double, sir. <laughs> no, indulge. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, just on a side note, you are you are a spellcaster, yeah. Does he? Yes, I am. <laughs> um, would Mandelbrot's grandfather have described the fairy that he caught, or would I have some kind of idea of description? Because I, I know from my own that what they look like or what what the telltale size of a fairy is. But would Mandelbrot? Oh, I'm sure Mandelbrot, yes. Well, his grandfather will have described the fairy. The, in the lack of, of lobes and the, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they can take on myriad appearances, you know, hair that looks like thistle down or, you know, the, the, the made of cobwebs, all this. You, you imagine it, they can appear that way. So, yeah, exactly. oh, yeah, you'll be intimately familiar with the, the many and varied appearances fairies can have. Wonderful. It's just little telltale signs like the little webbing between the fingers and the lack of lobes and, and yep. that sort of thing. So I, I want to try to, yeah. Because um, his main question wants to be is what he looked like facially, this Elias, to find out mm -hmm. if he was a fairy, basically. Yep, okay. So is Mandelbrot... All right, so are you, are you more or less decided on the <clears> roles? And does, does Sir Jedney, what... Yes, I was, I was going to say. Um, so Sir so Jedney is better... He's better at customs. He's, he's influenced. I think that's the only one that's left. Those are the only two that left. Okay, it's then. Not, so not great, but I don't know. <coughs> well, you've got very good customs, Rob. So if you go for customs, then, Sir okay. Jethney, I'll then go for influence. Baskul's goes for insight. insight. And then our wonderful magic user... Don't say that. You're going to fuck it up. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> it up, yes. Yeah. With the willpower. Actually, I'll, I'll go for the willpower. Uh, right. So that, well, just what, one thing's occurred to me with Mandelbrot. Um, you can either go for willpower or you could instead cast um, Baz Tiger's Tremulous Nesta, <gasps> which will cause her to blurt what's on her. Of course. Home. Yes. Now just remember how good you are at casting spells. Oh, you know, no, this is a this is he, he's he, he's single-mindedly going to be doing this. He, he's he knows how important this is. Um, so you'll see him stick his thumb on his four fingers um, like this, and it's going to go, and it'll it'll go. 
and um, cast this tremendous nester. It's it's okay. yeah. You're still gonna have to make your other rolls. Um, oh. so <laughs> but what I will do, if you if you successfully cast Fenris Nesta, yeah. I will actually let you make your that, that. Renya's resistances will be a penalty. Wonderful. So I'll do my fairy magic then. So yeah, it's going to be fairy magic at forty four. <gasps> uh, I nice. got a crit across the board. Uh, uh, no, it's not. Oh no, it's not. It's six not out quite. of. No, not quite. No, no, fifty one. No. So it, it's six out of uh, 44, so it's not quite a crit, but it's a good roll, nevertheless. Yeah. Um, actually, no, because she can resist it. Uh, let's see what happens with her resistance. I'll take well, this won't stop you from making the, the other four rolls as well. This is to sort of try and, uh, and, get, and gain a bit of a... Bit of an edge over this. Uh, so, uh, Renya has a willpower of 61. And let me get her all. 62. Oh. She oh. fails by a point. <laughs> the tremulous Nesta. Um, has taken hold of her. Um, uh, it, it's as, as, as though she starts to gabble. All her answers to your questions are going to be gabbled kind of at high speed. She can't stop herself. She is impelled to say exactly what's on her mind. So we will, uh, we just need three roles now. We need a customs influence and insight role. Is there an order you want those in? Um, yeah, we'll start with customs. Uh, 14 on 80. Yeah, nice one. Okay, so we have a success there. Uh, we'll go for the influence roll now. Oh, right. Okay, then. Remember, I hit things. <laughs> I just want to make that very clear before... Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh <laughs> nice. I hit things nicely. <laughs> <laughs> you influence what you touch with your fist. All right. And the, the final roll is insight. We'll have that. Uh, here's where I let you guys down. Could I use my last point of luck to re-roll? You can use your last point of luck to re-roll it. Big money. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, that that serves yourself yeah. right for those oh, nasty that, nurse. That'll teach you, nasty that'll teach you to juggle with children, live children. <laughs> <laughs> with live children. You teach you to juggle with dead ones. No. <laughs> That's All right. Yes. Well, at, at the end of that, you you scored uh, seventy five points. Okay, so still pretty good. Uh, we're now going to see what the resistances are from Renya. So I'm going to make, and these are all at a penalty now. Um, so these are all at two thirds. Uh, she's first of all going to try deceit to sort of get around not really spilling what exactly went on. When she's embarrassed by this, she's beginning to dawn on her that uh, uh, what she did may have contributed to, to everything that's gone wrong. So the seat is normally 36. It's going to be reduced quite heavily. Yep, she has failed that one. So trying to fib her way out of this is not going to help her. Um, her second role is a passion for Ronald. And that is at 48. It's kind of dwindled over time, and he did run off with a floozy. So 28, uh, oh. that's... Still a failure, given that it's at two thirds. Okay, her third one is willpower roll. That's an abject failure. And finally, is her passion for low dudgeon, and that is a failure as well. Now, she's going down. <laughs> she's going down. Okay. She has got no option but to come clean over what happened that, that summer. She'd been bathing in the river and she realized she was being watched. Um, she was flattered. She was, she was only 16, 17. 
uh, she was very flattered by the attention. And when she saw how beautiful the person was that was watching her, he, he looked as though his hair was made of sunlight, the most gorgeous man she, she'd ever seen. And he was polite. Um, he was curious, but he, he wasn't like the local boys who snigger and make crude jokes. He was, he was attentive. He was sensitive. He wooed her. And over the course of the next couple of days, they met frequently and they kind of had a flirtation. It wasn't a love affair. They kissed, they, they spoke sweet, amorous nothings, but clearly Elias, because he kept imploring her to come away with him and be his princess, he felt one way and she felt another. In the end, she went to the games. And although she tried to go and find Elias in the shadow of the old yew tree, he didn't appear. Well, he did appear once, but he was standoffish. And all he said was, well, I've collected enough sunbeams for my new cloak now. Goodbye. And that was the last that she ever saw of him. Boomf. He flickered away into the shadows of that old yew. And that is the last that she saw of him. But from that point on, things started to go wrong. Or rather, the next year, things started to go wrong. That was where Dudgeon started to lose the games. Ronald ran away. And life has been pretty miserable for Low Dudgeon ever since. And she's always kind of suspected that Elias might have had something to do with this. And every year for a few years, she'd go back into the forest and go to that yew tree and called to him but he never appeared but every year around the time of the games she's always kind of felt his presence the waft of lavender here and there the feeling of being watched sometimes but whenever she's tried to catch sight of him he's gone or there was never any sight of him beforehand so there are always odd little clues it seems that you've proved it now and these horseshoes, she doesn't know what significance they have, but the fact that one is above her cottage and he must have known where she lived, this could be a curse. And it's all her fault. And she feels horrible. So it's not high dungeon that are cheating. It's her fault. I cheated. I cheated on Ronald. And this is what's happening. Sir, Sir Fod, uh, um, try to gently approach her and gently, rather awkwardly, um, pat her up her arm. <laughs> and okay. say, it's, it's not, don't blame yourself. <laughs> but she will, and she does. He sounds like a really nasty piece of work. Where, where do you know where he was hanging out? All she knows is the, the old yew tree in the forest, which is uh, on the, the map on uh, roll 20, is roughly where I'm going to indicate with a, an orange blip. You've seen that? Okay. Roughly about there. So it's, uh, it's deep in the woods on the other side of Midsummer Meadow, which is where the games take place. And that was where they, they met. Um, the, the long been rumour, in fact, there was a fairy she quite near to um, Low Dungeon in these very woods, but nobody's seen the fairies for a long, long time. Indeed, the fairies used to take part in the games at one stage, but that was long ago, long before Renu was ever born. And slowly the she has kind of faded out of existence and sort of faded out of memory. I, Sir Fod just would like to say to everyone, uh, I think we need to go and suss up this tree. See whether or not he's hanging around there again. I think you're right, Surfy. And and if we can't find anything there, uh, I'll look over to Renya with this, then we can remove the rest of those horseshoes, perhaps, and maybe undo some of this uh, alleged curse. Maybe. Well, she hopes so. Yeah. And she, she'll do what she can to help, but she, she doesn't know anything about fairies and curses. She just knows that it's bad. And if Elias was jealous, that was his name, then 
who knows how we will react? Hmm. You, you can't just Don't go beg not to tell anybody. No one can know. Please, they will hate me. So far, did this, Some of them hate me already. So far, did this kneel down and take one of her little hands in his big meat rack of hands and gently pat into, we won't tell anybody. Don't you worry. Your secret is safe with us, but we will find him. I will find him. Don't you worry about that. And she, she dries her eyes and she, she sort of smiles and one of her little hands closes over your big one. No, 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 she doesn't. Don't, don't worry. I will stay safe. I will return. And... What, what about that woman that ran off with Ronolf? You you were in love with her. Where is she? I'd like to talk to her. Maybe maybe she knows where Ronolf is. Maybe he came with her. Who who told you that? And she points at Bask uh, Baskin. Uh, I think Baskin was just envious of my great persuasiveness and poetry yes yes it was that that is exactly right uh, he saw right through me I, I think he was just trying to get you here so i could talk to you once more and say how much my heart has yearned for you over these past few days when we've been away it's just been beating in a hollow chest pounding away with nobody to lay it softly to rest. It has been dreadful being without you. Baskell just wanted to bring us back together. But yeah, I yeah. but I understand oh. I understand that you probably don't want to see me or anything like that. But Oh you're very sweet, but it's more complicated than that. I don't want anybody. I want Ronald. Well, let's just take one Please day at a time. Stop. One day at a time. You stay uh, here. We'll go and find this. Mandelbrot, when he sees um, Sammy doing that, he will come on, my friend. Come, come on, my friend. Let, let us go. Let's go outside and find these things. We need to talk about what we're going to do. Okay. Mar Martwell. Yes. Yeah, Surfod will say, I know what I'm going to do. And the others go, uh, <laughs> No. Well, the, the, well Mart Wallen has by this point um, caught up with you. She will go and look after Renya and, uh, and, and try and console her and, uh, uh, and probably learn all about what you've just heard as well. You guys can decide what your next move is going to be. Now you know pretty much what seems to be behind this whole sorry saga. I think we need to track down Elias and... Yes. The, the, the problem we have, my friends, is that the fairy folk are fickle. You can't just... <laughs> that, no, can you say it? Fairy folk are fickle. Fickle folk are fairy. Fickle folk are fairy. Fairy folk are fickle. Good job there's no pheasant pluckers around here. Um, right. Well, so, um, that's, yeah, it's even them. Um, I, I, I knew of a man once who who, um, who who listened to the music of the fairies, and he's still dancing to this day. So you've got to be very wary of them. They will they will come with open arms, from my grandfather said, and and what they what you think is is a gift from them could be a complete. Well, you never get what you expect. Is all I'm going to say. I, I don't um, I don't worry about fairies, Mandelbrot. Because we we've got you. You're and, and yes. so you look around and so gently and <laughs> that's cool of both. <laughs> no, this is your time, Mandelbrot. This is your time to put the world to right. You need to raise up, I rise agree. up, rise up, <laughs> meet the challenge. The rise up, right rise this up. wrong. Um, much as I would love to do here. <laughs> 
fairy magic <laughs> is a completely different entity. I do a little bit of fairy magic, and I know that the, the well. The, there we go then. You, exactly. The coins can pay down to the dual tune fiddle well. We I need know, to. We need to so, go and find this Elias. My betting is that he's somewhere near that tree. Let's go to the yew tree. Yeah. And Mandelbrot will will <laughs> solve this problem, and you'll have the lady that you love after this, Sophie. I know it. Well, I can't think of three other people I would like to dance with for the rest of my life. So, <laughs> so, so let, us, let us go and dance the fairy tune. All right. So, um, okay, so, so, so far to just look at um, Jed and so you, you might want to stay at the back. Look at his ass. <laughs> Throw something. Just, all, all, all I can say is just, just be very careful. Do not trust what you see. Do not take things that that that's not yours. Mandelbrook, you do not take any gifts. <laughs> Mandelbrook, you you seem to be getting rather agitated and worried about uh, this. We're very worried. This is this is this don't is worry. Something that... We have faith in your magic. We've seen you spin those coins. We've seen you work your magic. You will be strong in the face of danger. Rise up, Mandelbrot. This is your time. <laughs> that was too long of a pause. <laughs> I, I think here uh, we need a, a roll against your believing destiny. 75% Mandelbrot. Certainly. I will believe in destiny. <laughs> you know, it always comes off that way, doesn't it? You're, you're uh, puffed up with pride at this wonderful speech. Of course, this is your hour. Just think it's that you're true. <laughs> you're <laughs> right. You'll quake it with the turned up boots when he sees you. Yes. This fairy. It's only a fairy. What could be worse? What could be just a fairy? Let's go. There's only one. Th Let's there's go. only one thing better than a fairy. A dead fairy. <gasps> oh, I thought you were going to say oh, friendship. I was, I was going to say a pint of beer. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> As Serfard does start to make his way purposefully and striding out uh, to, towards, oh, the, yeah. towards the door, then beckon to his crew to come and follow him, thus giving Bascal an, an evil uh, a sideways look. Just on a side note, we've all seen that last song from Le Mis, haven't we? Yes. Do you hear the people sing? So yes. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to okay. head to the to the, the tree. Old yew tree. Okay, so um, across the meadow, skirting around the uh, the 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 place where the games are taking uh, taking place at the moment, and. Uh, you, you dive into the woodlands. Um, it's This is deep old forest. Uh, so it's actually part of the great forest of Tantraval. So there's a lot of magic and uh, heavy old folklore and superstition in here. Um, the trees seem to crowd in around you. Um, it's very cool here in the forest. The sound of insects twittering. You can feel many eyes from hidden creatures watching you as you thread through sort of narrow old trails. And it's not too difficult to find the old yew tree. Uh, you eventually come to a clearing um, in the forest. And in the middle there, there is this big old gnarled yew, twisted and ancient, huge great branches like arms that sort of seem to swoop down to the ground. Um, there's nothing growing around it apart from clumps of grass and, uh, and some low lying shrubs and so forth. But, this is very much a, an, an old grandfather tree that sits in the middle of its clearing, defiant and bent with age. There's no sign of any fairies. There's no sign of a fairy she. Just the tree is sitting there. And it's now, I would say, getting on in the day. I would say it's, a, it's probably late evening at this point. Mm -hmm. It will be getting dark quite soon. Mandelbrot, can you find them? I, I can certainly try, my large fellow. Um, 
Mandelbrot wants to use his. Oh my gosh, what was it? it, it Be magical sensitivity, that, which is your, it's an insight roll for you. That's right. Okay, and just to um, see if I can focus. If there's any any shiny things. <gasps> shiny things. You have your horseshoe. I do have my horseshoe. Horseshoe, do you have? Uh, we now have four. Four. He says oh. tensively. Right. Each horseshoe is going to give you a plus fifteen bonus. Oh. Gosh. Um, in which case that would be a um... thirty-nine out of sixty. Well, no. How many bonus? No, no. Minus, isn't it? It's minus. Oh, right. Wouldn't it? So you got so you you got yeah. So it'd be thirty-nine out of sixty. That's right. So yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that is a success. Um, the tree, the yew tree is definitely magical. Um, it's obviously some kind of way into the fairy sheet itself. Now, the fairy sheet does not show itself to you, even with the horseshoes, your magical sensitivity. You, you simply know it's there. But holding the horseshoes, and you get the impression that if you just call to Elias, there's clearly some relationship between him and these items. Maybe that will do the trick. In which case, Mandelbrock, feeling this 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 intuition for three, he, he will he'll hold that two in each hand, and he'll say, "Elias, could we have a word?" Okay. Uh, give, me, give me another D hundred roll now, please. A straight D hundred. 54. Okay. There's, first of all, uh, a scent of lavender wafting on the air. Then there's a light that begins to appear from behind the yew tree. It's like brilliant sunlight. And um, bear in mind that it's getting quite dim uh, here in the gloaming. Um, the shaft of sunlight begins to move, and a tall, blonde haired figure steps out from behind the tree. Um, Elias, it, as you saw him earlier, he's, he's tall, he's got long blonde hair, um, a pair of, of tapering pointed ears uh, protrude from, from the golden locks. He's, he's an incredibly good looking chap. He wears a very frilly shirt and you can see that the frills are actually made of cobwebs and have been knitted by spiders that are living on the shirt. Um, he wears a pair of moleskin trousers and knee high, soft, shiny boots with big shiny buckles. And the sunlight is coming from the cloak that's draped over his shoulders, which seems to be made of pure sunbeams, but it moves like the finest cloth gold. On his hip is a rapier. And he's got one hand sort of leaning on the hilt of the rapier. The other one's on his hip. And he sort of regards you with a look of semi-disdain. Oh, I saw you before. You put hands on me, you bounder, he says. And he's looking at Surford. Yeah. You've been up to some mischief in the village. Are these, and he points... I to, have. He points, are these, and he points to the two horseshoes that Mandelbrot is holding. Are these yours? He looks at the horseshoes. I say, you've got no bally right taking things that don't belong to other people. You put those back now or give them to me. I want, give them to me now. I said, no. Elias, no. Do, do you know why, my friend? Because you took them from the blacksmith ten years ago, and they were not yours, not. they were his. Finders How dare keepers. you calling me a liar? I'm not a liar. How dare you? I'm not a thief. How dare you? Well, I'm not calling you When were they deserved you it? You took them, them, all. didn't you? Couldn't help it, could you? You had to take them. So, what if I do? You, give, you give them back now, I swear you regret it. You will. Yes, I, you I'm, I'm not allowed to give them back. She won't let me. So why, why did you put them up? Are you working for someone? 
working for someone? No. <laughs> Foolish mortal creature person thing. I work for no one. I work for me. I am me. I am Elias. So you just want to cause disappointment and bad luck in the well, town? Well, why not? They deserve it, all of them. They cause me disappointment and bad luck. How about that? Huh? How would you like it if you'd been disappointed? How would you like it? Uh, you found the love of your life and they took her away from you, turned her against you. Yes, that's what they did. And don't say that she didn't because she did it and she didn't stick her tongue out. I don't how, like how did they? How did they do that? How did they turn her against you? Shan't tell you. Shan't or won't? Shan't. And won't. How about Both. if I give you a shiny florin? <laughs> I want my shiny horseshoe. You give those back to me, you bounder. I can't and give you he's... the horseshoes because Ren, you won't let me. Okay. He's beginning to move his fingers in a quite interesting articulated way. Oh. Um, so far to hit him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, uh, if you want to try and hang on to these, uh, Mandel, he's, he's going to use magic to try mm. and pull those horseshoes out of your hand. You can resist with willpower. I, I will. I will use my damn this because I do not want to let these go it's because they're, they're helping me more than they're helping him. And yeah, I want to use a point of look there. Plus they make the nice world. knuckle dusters as well. Knuckle right. dusters, yes. so, okay, so when I roll a success, that's uh, 21. Yep, I'll use my point look now to oh, re roll. Yeah. Oh, what, yeah. Uh, uh, formidable 27 out of 33. Well, you've you've rolled a twenty. This is an opposed roll, so you need to actually beat twenty-eight with a higher number. Uh, so you. Oh, I, I just failed, haven't I? Yeah, you no. just failed. You're one point <clears throat> off. <clears throat> okay, so he he waggles his fingers. Uh, the horseshoes begin to pull as though with an irresistible force out of your hand. Um, he's going to get one d four of them. <gasps> Two of them shoot from your hand and dance through the air and straight into his waiting fingers. If he wants the other two, he's going to have to cast that spell again. Mm. And he, he, he sort of looks defiantly at you. Thank you. They're mine. I'll be putting these back because I know where you got them. Well, if you put them back, we will just take them again because that won't You can take them down as much as you want. It won't do any good. So Why I'd, won't it do any good? So if I'd take a step forward. Because of the... Sp and then he sort of stops. I'm not telling you. Ah. Um, at which point you'll see him again. Um, Brandlebot will put his fingers together. Okay. Like that, <laughs> and then go... And he will do tremulous, tremulous Nesta, Nesta, with a seventeen out of twenty-six no! or formidable. Oh, but it is. Okay, it doesn't just have a, a willpower roll. Yes, he does. He gets a oh, willpower. Oh, seventeen's roll. low. Seventeen's uh, low. So no. his, his willpower is thirty-four. Oh, Ooh, sixty-eight. <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> He, he has no option but to blurt out that, no, you can't, it won't do any good, because I cast Bidork's Big Restoration backwards. Ah! Bidork's Restoration. What will that do? Why, why would you do that? Well, if you cast it back, Bidork's Pithy Restoration, um, I will be, because... Uh, you've got him under Tremulous Nesta. I will read the description of the spell for you. Um, well, I can find it. Here we go. Bidoc's Pithy Restoration temporarily fixes and removes the effects of a single curse, provided that the adverse magic lies upon someone else and that the user has a superior casting skill. Now, he cast the reverse of this. He's a fairy. They manipulate magic. So he actually used it to create a curse. And he's cursed the whole village. He cast Bidoc's Pit of Restoration and he used each of those horseshoes to secure it all around the village 
so that everybody would be affected, especially Renia. Mm. Is there something we could do to make it so you wouldn't do the res restoration? Uh, we we could bring Ren Renya to her to you. She she. <gasps> oh, rather. Oh yes, I want her more than anything, more than anything. Bearing in mind, he's still under the effects of the spell. Oh please, yes. She I still love loves you. Spell. How can we stop you from doing this? If you bring me Renya and she agrees to come away with me, well, and then I'll, I'll, I'll stop it. I'll I'll stop. I'll I stop understand her. how you oh, well, feel, Elias, but Renya will not come because she stop. lost her love to somebody else. You I don't know care. This. She, I don't care about him. He was a yeah, crap. He, he may be a probably went up for the, somebody else, but she still loves him. And because of that... She loves me more. She should love me know, more. I'm nice. She likes you as a friend. <laughs> I want to be a friend. <laughs> this this conversation know? seems well well rehearsed, Medivac. Is this... <laughs> <laughs> I can, I, I, can, I can give her all sorts. She can be a fairy princess when she can come and live with me in my fairy but castle. She doesn't and, want and she to. She... Have unicorns and rainbows and anything she likes forever. I can come live with you. No, <laughs> you're not her. I want her. But she won't. I mean, I can go speak to her, but she will not do anything if the village is, is, is in danger. Oh, she dangles the horseshoes. Well, fine. If she wants this to carry on forever, it will. So then, well, what? I don't. I don't think she'll care because she doesn't live forever. But if we bring her and she says no, if you give her the choice and she says no, and she prefers to be with someone else, here, look at Baskell and look at him and back. Um, would you be happy to leave now? Then. Oh right. So if she right. You're going to have to try and persuade me of this. This is going to be another task for you. Okay. This is a different set of roles that I need. But oh, yes, Braun. <laughs> do, do you know what? I'm going to let you use Braun. I'm going to let you try and... <laughs> you've been, you've been sure kicking, muscles. <laughs> you, you came there with purpose. I'm going to let you use Braun as one of your roles. So what we want is a Braun role, an eloquence role to flatter him, um, to break down his armor of insouciance, um, a folklore role to introduce an understanding of fairy protocols into the dialogue that hopefully he will appreciate, and finally an influence role to convince him to do the right thing. Well, I can do folklore as I know the ways and wills of the fairies. I can do brawn. <laughs> I could see that you are worried about that one. But I, 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 I'm fearful. If I fumble, that I'll just be. My brawn's nice. I'm all right. Um, eloquence and, and influence. Um, well, you're eloquent, aren't you? I, I, I'm fairly eloquent, but I don't know how um, eloquent Basco is. Basco is as eloquent as he is persuasive. Yeah. Oh, influence. <laughs> I think if Baskell, you go with influence and yeah, Jedney yeah. goes with Ellie. I feel that eloquence and courtesy and being a, a noble knight, even though you ran off, you know, that sort of like... Hey, hey, that wasn't my <laughs> brave, brave, sir. Yeah, I'll take influence. Uh, okay. Baskell's been trying to kind of make an agreement, at least, so... Cool. Okay. Is there an order okay. you want to choose? Um, I'll let you choose the order. I'll, I'll do Braun first, and then we. This is set us up, gang, for the rest of the. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go last for the big letdown. Right here we go. This is my broad Braun skill. Boom. <laughs> Third. That would be so funny. <laughs> here's a here's some influence. Okay, you pull yourself up to your full height, flex your muscles, sort of Charles Atlas style. Uh, he did, th th there's a sort of a, a whimper. <laughs> so Yedney will use the point of luck and he'll flip back. Okay, you success. can reverse that and that should give you a success. Yeah. Okay. This school's not a team oh. player. <laughs> Who's going next? Folklore with Manuel Brock? That's a success. And Baskell's for influences higher up. Finally. Baskell. Yeah, our 
I rolled and I failed. Um, it's it's up there as a uh, 53 out of 45. Unless you I... want me to re-roll, but no. So now I've got it there. Okay. Can I just say, so, Pascal, we're, we're not cross. We're just very disappointed. That's why I just my kids all the time now. I'm, I'm not angry. Pascal. I'm, I'm being disappointed. Yes. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. Um, Elias grudgingly agrees that if you can bring Renya to it, and she agrees to come with him, he will lift the curse. He'll lift it now, this very instant, or when she's agreed anyway, and that will be the end of it. But she's got to come with him. No choices. She has to come. If not, you can carry on and suffer. See if I care. Okay. Tongue out again. We'll just have a quick huddle. <laughs> well, no, We're because... gonna, like going to the back of the dragon's den. He's drawn his rapier and he's sort of doing some fancy sort of footwork, Errol Flynnish moves, sort of uh, fencing the shadows while you're having your little conflap. Uh, I think I think we we get her, and if she refuses, was we'll us hit him. Nee. It's it's on the back of the head. We just hit him. <laughs> oh, hit, hit him or uh, hit him. Okay. Hit well, him. if we're, we don't hit women. Bas Basco, if you go and get her with Jetney and bring something to chuck back no, with no. you. Yes, can, can, I was I, right with you I there. I'm gonna go get my stop. cats. Please, please, please stop, stop, stop. Can I just say, did you hear the deal? If she comes and she stays with him and goes with him, then he'll lift the curse. If not, then he won't. Yeah, but that's yeah. when we hit him. Yeah. But we'd be putting this lady in great danger in case he snatched her and stole her away. But, okay, then, man, what options? Well, there must be a way to... Don't hypothesise, give us actions. Actions. I can't, I'm thinking, <laughs> this is beyond my, my head. Uh, there must be a way to banish him back or to make him not come you... and bother her again. We need we need to find his weakness. Mandelbrock, would you be able to cancel out his, his curse? I know what his weakness is. The ladies. No, it's here. Fists. No, nobody can fight off that fist. No. Especially um, when there's two of them. Yeah, the fair, like fair, so, um, going, going back to uh, so Yedney's question, fairy magic is, is far more powerful, I think, than my magic. Um, so you can't... I, I you can can't, try and cancel so it, you can't, you can't I'd, do it. I'd be struggling. It's, it's more natural to them. I, I have to work at it. Um, they just do it. You saw how we took those horseshoes from my hand. I Mandibur, tried my best. Focus, focus. Actions. I'm, I'm sorry. Actions. You're right. You're right. And what am I doing? <laughs> oh, okay. Can you we banish can, can... him? I don't know. Could I? Could I? Is there a way for me to? Give me a folklore roll. Seventy-two, mm. seventy-five. You, you can't banish a fairy. They're, they're, they're far too powerful. They're, uh, they're, they're intrinsic to the, uh, to the Elder Isle. They're intrinsic to the world. Um, <clears throat> what you have to do with them is bargain, bargain and so. get them to agree to terms. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Usually I, I, I thought that. They usually keep their word. If they agree something, yeah. they will usually agree it. But you've got to be very careful how you, you phrase the contract. So Mandelbrot, bargain with him. Tell him well, that's fine, but if no, she no, doesn't but... want to come, then what will he do? Sephiroth, we need to have something that he truly wants, but the girl is not in the equation because we can't give so her to him. So what does he want? Well, would, would, something would he has else. perhaps, maybe why don't we try to get his cloak off him or or his sword and then bargain to get, give him it back if he lets us 
you know, if you let if you lift the curse, take something of his. We could threaten to chop the tree down. No, well, <laughs> no, that would bring the whole fury of the she against us if this is the entrance to the she, and the she is a wonderful place. It does it, it does wonders? But no, this is just a spoiled. You've got to treat him like a spoiled child. This, this is your domain, Mandelbrot. I tell us what you want us to do. Well, how about if we distract him? And perhaps because he loves is is um, the cloak that has made from dewdrops for the, the, the sunshine. Maybe if if um, Bascule could get behind him and take the cloak, and then we could maybe bargain to give him it back. Perhaps. Ever stolen somebody's clothes off them before? It's a cloak, I've, surely. I've just thought, of, a I've thought of, of it. Like, you know, my God, that's a challenge, though. <laughs> yeah, because I'd have to get my hands around in front of him and, and undo the clasp of the cloak. And it's just something else. Then, do you think you'd be able to take from him? Uh, Deathly. There's a soft sound of bird. <laughs> he certainly seems very, very proud of his his cloak made of sunbeams. He was collecting the sunbeams mm. when he first met Renya. Go for it, Pascal. Get his cloak. Uh, yes, but I'll only do it if you promise to come swinging. If he turns on me, you'll do that. You'll save me, right, Cersei? Of course. You haven't done anything bad to me? Uh, Mandelbrot, uh, can I have a perception <laughs> roll from <laughs> Certainly, yes. Oh, that's not a good roll for me. Let's have a look. Oh, uh, 38 out of 42. Okay. Um, looking at the cloak, uh, there's Elias still practicing his fencing. Hurry up, you chaps, getting bored. Want my princess or no cursing lifty? You see that the cloak is fastened with a brooch at his shoulder. Mm. Um, the brooch is about the size of one of the coins that you oh. use in oh. Coins of Bin Penny Dance. Mm. And if Coins of Bin Penny Dance will affect something of the size of a coin, maybe it will affect something the size of a brooch. Mm. In which case, um, I will... Noticing this, I, I, I will say to um, Bascule, um, if if you get if if you get behind him, um, while maybe we have Sayedni and Serford go and talk to him, and you get behind him, and when I do my little coin dance, that hopefully the cloak will fall to the floor in front of you. I could do my act if you if you think that might help. I think what, it would. Which, which part of your act would you think about doing? Well, I could do my flexing. The oil? Oh. You, got, you brought the oil, right? You might... Oh, I don't, I don't seem to... That, <laughs> I could, you know something? I could take my shirt Fairies, off. Fairies would love that. Thing. Yeah. He, I'm sure he would. He'd or be in I, could, I could read poetry or play play my pan pipes. As a distraction. Just Whatever you do, we'll flex. just, I'll, 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 <laughs> we'll say I'll, I'll be leaving to go get Renya and then I'll double back so you guys just, and brilliant. I'll give you the sign, Mandelbrot. I, I like, didn't know you like this, to be quite honest. There's a different sign of you. I, Wonderful. It's, oh. uh, it's the first time for everything. I'm not normally, you know, the sneaky type. <laughs> Don't worry. I've got my lucky Mac rabbit's foot in my britches. Don't worry. <laughs> That still gets me. A, a, quick, <laughs> a quick stroke and a, it'll bring us luck. Okay, so if you're going to try this, um, it will be a stealth roll to get behind um, Elias. All right. It's um, a stealth roll to try and unclasp the cloak and whisk it away from him. Now, the second stealth roll 
will be one grade easier if the coin spin Benny Dance spell successfully works. Okay. Um, it's just a straight fairy magic roll. There's no resistance from the um it does. Yeah. From, from the from the roach. Oh, look at the pressure on me. Would you like a stealth <gasps> roll first for the doubling back? Is it, yeah, um, well, no. a stealth roll for the doubling back first. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, no, keep it. it I have is, no luck. Yeah, keep it. You is, can keep that roll. That's fine. Is um oh. is Sir Fods flexing and going through his um routine um helping or via distracting Tell Elias? Tell me what. Give me an insight roll before you do that. Wow. Yeah. Oh, this is not good. Oh, I'm going to use my last point of luck to reverse, to, reverse. Uh, to get 26. All right. Um, you're not so sure that shows of strength are what impressive. Um, poetry. Oh, very, he's very vain. Oh. Some poetry. May yeah. well do it. So I'll tell you what, if you can succeed in a poetry role, then we will um, we will add another bonus onto the stealth roll, the second stealth roll for Bascule. Here's in other words, he's going to have to fumble to oh, screw. My poetry is on form. Who is this person? Who, st who skips <laughs> through the woods? Who has golden hair that flow in the wind? We do oh, not do. know Ooh. how wonderful this person is, but we do know that bards will sing. It doesn't quite rhyme with wind, but I've gone from a half rhyme. <laughs> Just oh, oh, say it again, say it again. That's great. That's about me, isn't it? Oh, That's about I, how marvellous I am. I could oh, say, say it again. more, more. Yeah, whose eyes are sparkling like stars in the sky, whose lyrical voice is... Perfect. Mine, that's mine, my voice. Who I leaves lady that makes light ladies but sigh at the dulcet tone? He sighs. He Just sighs get that cloak. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's good. You snuck around the back. Um, Mandelbrot, you cast coin spin penny dance. The while um, Elias is so enamoured with his poetry, flashing the hell out of him, the the brooch jiggles around, bounces about, comes undone, and the cloak slips neatly into Bastille's hand. Um, the sunlight has suddenly gone out from around um, Elias's shoulders, and it's now draped over Bastille's arm. So, Bastille, what are you doing? Um. Presumably, um, uh, uh, trying to get back to the other side of the group, but if he hasn't been noticed, he's gonna. Oh, just, try just, yeah, he, he's he's too enamored with it. He's too puffed up with his own importance of the poem, so he, you, you can easily get back to the rest of the group. And, and as Bascal comes back to the uh, <laughs> group, um, Sir Fodder continuing his um, poetry will say, "But he was vain, and he was thick." And but the other party were far too quick. Now he's lost what he just wanted. That's it. It just it, <laughs> it just finishes. You uh, <laughs> <laughs> achieve the desired effect. Um, okay. Um, Elias has realised that the cloak is, has gone. Um, he he lets out an absolute roar of indignation. You're a thief. Give it yes. back. Well, you're <laughs> going to yep. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Elias, Elias, you, you, we, we're not going to give it back. Did you know? If we give it back to you, you must do something for us too. If Elias makes a, a lunge for Basco. How's that? If he makes a lunge for Basco. Well, that's no I'll good. We, 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 we don't need to be cursed. Um, what we'd like you to do is to uncurse and never ever again curse the town and to leave Renya alone and then we'll give you this beautiful cloak back. Oh. And it is a beautiful cloak. Basco, pretend you tried to rip it. <laughs> <laughs> 
the sunbeams begin to actually come apart. <gasps> oh, oh, well, I'm, I'm going to stop with a little bit of shock. You know, it, it, th th there is a horrible whimper from, don't, no, it's Fragile. It took me a century to collect those sunbeams. Use your teeth, Basco. Use your teeth. <laughs> but all you need to do it. is simply remove the curse and leave Renya be. She, she's not for the fairy. She's, she's mortal. Okay. I am going to give um, Elias a willpower roll. That's a 62. Okay, his willpower roll has failed. Oh, okay, don't hurt my cloak, please. Yes, yes. I... But I want to see her. Bring her to me and then I'll lift the curse and you'll give me my cloak back. We'll, we'll give you the cloak back and you'll Pretty lift please, the curse and off. you promise not to go near Renya or look at her or bother her or anybody she knows or the whole town again. Oh, uh, my. No, no, there's no might. If we do this, you do not disturb the village again. I do you do, like your cloak? I could do it. Yes, I like, yeah, cloak. Yes, I like yes, your cloak. Yes, yes, yes. No, I like, I like your cloak as well. I don't like it. I could tear it. Well, actually, I do. But I could still... We could quite happily bring Renya here for one last look, but that is all you will have. And would you rather have that or just have the memories you have of her from before? Oh, <laughs> you are a romantic at heart. <laughs> Want everything. It's not fair. Nothing's fair in life, apart from life. And fairies, they're fair in and life. Fair in life. <laughs> you, you, you fairies, you are the most wonderful people. You can make whatever you want, and it's amazing. But as mortals, we have our own lives to live, and we cannot go together. Well, I don't care no. about that, but I want her. We can't have her, otherwise we have the You curse. say I can have a last look, and if I can't have a last look, then you don't have the curse lift. I give a toss about that club or anything. I'll curse, I'll curse you as well. Mangle brought the destined. You won't be destined when I've cursed you. The only thing you'll be destined for is destitution. Ah, see, I do poetry and all. I've, I've not as been... good as me though. <laughs> let's take so, the so let's take you, the cloak and go. Curse you as well, and you'll be puny, <sighs> and people will laugh at you because you're sand. I don't have time. Oh, no, I, I, I don't Lick. think. I don't, Elias, I don't think we will bring her back and we'll take the cloak too. Yeah. No, I'm taking the cloak. No, no, I Let's want go. to see her. Let's go. Yeah. Shall we go? Yeah. Or would you rather lift the curse and never, ever set foot you in this You promise you that I could see her one last time and I promise I'll lift the curse. Go on, I promise, I promise, I promise. I'll lift the curse, mm. I promise. I never I'll come back. Lift the back. curse now. No, I will lift the pro I'll lift the curse when you bring her to see me just one more time, and she can say she's sorry, and she's got to say she's sorry and mean it. And you will not try to take her. She might, she's not going to say she's sorry. Right. In which case, let, let's go. Let's go. All right, and all right. We'll, we'll right I will take her. I will take her. I will take her. I will tell me she's going to say she's sorry and mean it. I will. She hurt me. In what way did she hurt you, Elias? He tells his story. They had a wonderful couple of so now a single day to a fairy is like a it's like a year. He spent two full days with her, two full years where they romanced and frolicked, and he fell deeply, deeply in love with her. I'm just going to watch the games, she said. I'll be back soon, she said. Of course we will carry on playing, she said. We'll bathe together in the river, she said. We'll be happy. Rainbows, unicorns. She didn't come. 
she didn't come to the yew tree and he waited all that time. So he sneaked closer and he could see the games going on. And he could see this boy and she was cheering for him. And when the boy won the tug of war, she wrapped her arms around him and she was smothering him with kisses. And he dropped to one knee and proposed. And she, he was swinging her around and she looked so happy. And that should have been us. That should have been me. And it wasn't. And she didn't come to the tree like she promised. She said she would. And she didn't. So I made sure they all suffered, and they have, and they will carry on suffering. But I did promise, and I will live the girl, but I want to see her one more time, so well, she can say sorry. I tell you, Elias, because, and, and, and I understand your pain. No, I'm you sure Seth, Seth here here he knows your pain a few times. Um, we will bring her to apologise as she promised to come to the tree. But then she will say sorry and go the way she came. Well, and I'll get my cloak back. And you will get your cloak back and the curse will be lifted and you will never bother them again. The whole village and herself. And us too. <laughs> well, <laughs> all right, then. Okay, we're going to take the cloak away with us while we talk to her, but I promise we will be back. You got to come back, because if you don't, I won't lift the curse. And I, I know. I'll Elias. make it worse. Serfold is quite Elias, happy to stay here. Um, I figured that I might give a cloak to you, Mandelbrot, since it's kind of hurting my fingers. So, uh, okay. yeah. It's tingly. <laughs> and uh, maybe Sir Yedney and I could go and... Uh, hmm. That's a more sensible thing, but can, 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 can you explain to um, um, to Raya that um, about what's happened and, and we'll, everything we'll, that, we'll, we'll that she must... Everything. It's fine. That she must be sincere with her apology, because it's a very... I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed with her, to be fair, that she promised to come back and she never did. We will, we will, we will, explain, we'll explain the situation fully. Promi oh. pro well, you've got to explain it. Promises are binding. If you say you're going to do something, you must do it, especially with the fairies. Especially where fairies are concerned. Mm. You don't break your promises. Never, ever. Okay, so Baskul and Syedny are going to go back and... Uh, Get Renier, yeah? Yes. Okay. Well, back at Renier's cottage. She's she's sort of waiting up for you. Uh, she comes to the door as she sees you appear. She's got a look of anticipation, fearful anticipation on her face. Did, did he come? Did you find him? What did he say? Will we help? We did. We found him. Um, and we have... Um, come to an arrangement to to solve resolve the whole situation. Um, the, 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 there is one part of that. Um, he he would like to see you one last time as part of that arrangement. Um, he has asked for an apology, but I think if you if you explain what happened to him and your side of the story and the fact that you did go back to the tree, um, it might. And as as part of your apology for 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 everything, then um, everything will be fine. And he'll lift the curse, and he won't bother anyone, yourself or anyone in the village, ever again. And, and everything he, will be resolved. And he's promised that. He has promised that. We have it in his. We have we have his word. But part okay. of that, part of his counter bargain was that he he saw you one last time and that you uh, apologised. Okay, um, I will have a roll from you. Um, I think this is going to be, uh, it's, it's definitely going to have to be an influence roll. You can augment this, um, I think, with your law chivalry. Our law chivalry. Which yes. is, it's going to give you plus 14. Plus 14. 
Basque will help by keeping his mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the best kind of help Basque could give. <laughs> it's incoming. It's a 39 out of 50. Oh, 39 out of 50. Right. She's going to get a resist roll. Um, Seventy-nine. That's a fail. So she agrees. She all she wants is for the curse to be lifted. She didn't mean to hurt him. She she was playing. She was young. She was very young. It was a wonderful time. She didn't understand what he was really like. She didn't understand he would be so petty. She certainly didn't mean for the village to get hurt like this. But enough's enough. Yes, yes. she'll do what she needs to that's, do. That's brilliant. Um, we best we best get going and um, now he's 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 awaiting so she comes back to you it's it's very dark by the time you get there but you know the cloak helps who's got the cloak you did oh mandelbrot kept the cloak. i have the cloak yeah. yes okay mandelbrot. so yep, yep, with with a lantern you you go back through the forest uh, low dungeon is in silence just a few lights on. You make your way through the trees back to the uh, the shadow of the old oak. Can you see the sunbeam where the cloak is there? Um, united again for the first time in 10 years. Um, Elias starts off as being diffident towards Renya and he tries to show that he really doesn't get all he wants is an apology, but you can see that his heart is beginning to melt again as he sees her. Um, she asks if it's true that he cast the curse and is that why Ronulf left or did you make him go? He says we had nothing to do with that. That was none of his doing. And the curse was only to make the games go badly for Low Dungeon. It had nothing to do with anything else. So Renya listens to all of this and she asks what he finally wants. He says that he has agreed to lift the curse. Of course, Stay here. I promise, and I'll keep my promises because I do unlike some people, but you have said sorry, so I suppose that's all right. But, you know, if you did want to come with me, then I'd be very happy. If you wanted to come with me, I wouldn't make you be up to you, really, if you wanted to. And you can keep the cloak. He holds out a hand. And Renya takes it, and they step into the shadow of the oak tree, and there's no sign of them after that. But you still have a cloak made of sunbeams. I have a cloak. <laughs> This would look great on you, Mandelbrot, for your for your. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it'll, it'll make you look like a it'll make you look like a fairy, but you'll be fine. Don't worry. <laughs> your your act will benefit. From you it, I'm you sure. can carry it. Don't worry. <laughs> who's who's got the uh, the two remaining horseshoes? Is that Mandelbrot? I, I do as well. Yes. <laughs> no, you don't. They've disappeared. Oh. Cool, oh. cool but bye bye. Thirty points. Would um, be. Uh, Mandelbrock will, will stand there in stunned, almost silence. And he'll say, well, a promise is a promise. And I think she's made the right choice by going with him because she did. She seemed to like him and he clearly was besotted with her and fairies. She might have enjoyed that from what I've heard. And, and her husband is, is clearly never coming back, so perhaps she'll get some happiness. Yeah. That, that's, that's a really important thing. So, Jedney, happiness makes the world go round, and then we continue. But look at this cloak I have now. Just imagine my show. I can be shining behind me, the coins will glisten. We shall have so much fun. And imagine how much we'll save on oil. No more <laughs> lanterns to fill. 
Wonderful. Every cloak has a silver lining. Quite literally. <laughs> Sephard, as, as we walk back, um, Sephard would just sort of like mutter underneath his breath, would have been better if we hit him. <laughs> <laughs> just okay. sad, I, I can imagine one on seven weeks later, Amanda Brock's in his tank going, how do I turn it off? Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, so we... We saved oh, low dungeoners. Did you? Well, we we get to find out, I think, because it's yeah. still day. Uh, no. Ma- Mandelbrot. The final day of the game. Mandelbrot can. Yeah. Um, we'll just leave it to Jedney and Pascal to explain why they went into the woods with a lady <laughs> and then she came out <laughs> no, without. <laughs> So you've got five minutes left because you guys have to wrap up by 10. Yeah. You normally do. And uh, so the last day of the games, um, this would normally be where things really start to go downhill for for poor old low dungeon. There's the tug of war final. There's the donkey jousting final. The cave tossing for all the finals are going to take place. And low dungeon win a few, and they lose a few. But by the end of it, it's actually declared a draw. The points are level at the very end. Low Dudgeon have not lost. They haven't won, but they haven't lost at all. Of course, nobody in their their, their elation that a, a draw is grudgingly agreed between the two. Everybody decides it's worth celebrating, except for Black Tam, Shandy and the Stugs. But the fact that they have been denied the excuse for their violent revenge is, that, that's consolation enough. And they will slink off and drown their sorrow elsewhere. Renya's absence will be noted, especially by Mart Wallen. And she's the one that will seek you out and want the full story from everybody. And it's a question of whether you decide to tell it or not. Uh, yes, I, I think we so, should be full. Use the cloak as evidence. That's right, yes. And explain the whole true love story, how she meant to go back, but time is different in the she. And she's missed her opportunity, which he took the wrong way. So, in that case, every year, I will come to that yew tree and I will leave a little something for Renya to take back to the fairy she, assuming she ever sees it or finds it, just so that she knows that at least I was always her friend. And that, that- Sephora would just Sephora would just look at uh, Baskill and say, "And if nobody takes it, you leave it there. You oh, leave yeah, yeah. it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't <laughs> slink back in there unless it, uh, unless it was cool. But, you know, I mean, <laughs> Brundlebot will will, will 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 say to Ma, "That's that's the most wonderful thing I've ever heard. Knowing that if you're in there with the fairies, that somebody out here is thinking of you." And I thought Serfod was the romantic in the, the group, but no, it is Mandelbrot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, there I'm, we just go. I'm just hopeful. And oh. Elias kept his promise. They do keep their promises. And although he's a, a man child and uh, and <laughs> petty and vain and all those things, he, he was willing to keep his promise. And just getting that apology from Renu was enough for him. But, you know, Renya's lonely, really. And uh, she was looking for some companionship and hearing that it wasn't Elias's doing. It's not it was actually Ronald that really did have his head turned by the dancer and her athleticism. Um, yeah. Well, I offered her, you know, I, right from the beginning, she could have had... Um... A lot of athleticism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
there will be another town, Surfy. Yeah. Another lady. There'll be there'll be other towns that you will fall you fall in love so easily there'll be somebody else at some point. Yes. Another you know, dungeon I, two point oh. Well one thing I I really love about this, it, it's a bit it reminds me of Star Trek. Because at the end of this adventure, all the characters get back on the caravan and go to the next, yeah. Yeah, the next you, planet or the next town, and there's you, another you issue. And it, it, you see, I think it's a really nice, almost like campaign. You know, and I was, I was just thinking, um, one of the towns they could get close, and there's some kind of plague in there that's you know being set off or attacked on the road or things like that, and you know giants etc so yeah so all sorts of directions yeah i just love that idea of a an ongoing that being the thread throughout the cam yeah. campaign the wandering caravan yeah yeah i think that would that'd be brilliant yeah well there you are thank you We're, very much kind of at time we 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 got to the end of the scenario in the end and i hope you enjoyed it i thoroughly and i had a, very a much great so. time running up it's fantastic, thank you. I I was in my element. Sorry. Yeah, you were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, oh. it's, it's been absolutely brilliant. And I, I mentioned it in the podcast as well. It's, I I think every GM plays Mithras or GM's Mithras differently, and it, that doesn't matter. It doesn't because it, it's like I think you say it, Lars, at the end when you do anything for the podcast, you make. You make each Mithras your own. That mm. that's that's well, the joy of the it, the rules. It's all about the story, not the rules. Isn't it? Yeah, very very but, much yeah. so. So the rules are a guide, but the story is what matters. I think. Fantastic. That, yeah, yeah, that that's what always drives me. As long as there's a good story and a good way for the characters to interact with it and and shape the outcome of it. Yeah. And uh, you know, half half of what's happened in that scenario was uh, was was a result of your interactions and choices that you made and things that you decided to do, and uh, that 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 was what made it huge amounts of fun. Yeah. Uh, so I th I thank you for, for helping me playtest that. And uh, um, no yeah, I I would love to run some more for you at some point. That'd be brilliant. Fantastic. Or, Whether it's PNS or whatever. Or maybe. You could be a player, or maybe I could be a player, uh, and I'll, yeah. I'll, and you, you could be the player, and Longshanks could GM it for. I I'd like in Wales to GM. I'd love to go. No, yeah. Actually, in Wales, on page two hundred three, and I would just say this Mithras is so. my Mithras. <laughs> <laughs> right. right thank you so much for that Lars it's been absolutely you, fantastic guys. it's been wonderful yep. adventuring into the the new world I'm still I'm still waiting for Eon Games to get it's the... not there is it no it's... They're, they're, they they're, they had some issues with finding a printer the printer that they had chosen um, said that they would only do it in black and white so <sighs> we had a long discussion over do you do it in black and white and I said look I wouldn't. It would not be. Mm. It would be shortchanging. So they have some challenges in trying to find a, another printer to do it at a reasonable cost because it's such a big book. Um, the the idea that we had was that maybe we'd split the print run. Uh, we we did find a printer in Lithuania. Uh, we we're going to split split the print run between us. But Aeon have actually found another printer in the UK that will do it in colour. Fantastic. So they are getting ready to be able to offer it. So hopefully it won't be too long. And I'll follow up with, with Ollie the Rathbone at uh, Aeon and, uh, yeah. and see what's going on. But yeah, it should be it should be there soon. That would be, that'd be absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it's been absolutely fantastic, Lars. Thank you so much for giving up your time yes. um, to, to come along. And we, we can... Um, we'll look forward to it all happening again. We we should get as many different people from around the world in for one big game, something you know. Get get Brian and Mike as well, and um, Alex and everybody together. That would be absolutely fantastic. <laughs> yeah. That would be different. <laughs> yeah. So it's all right. I, I, I've got a full Zoom account. We could do up to a hundred people. Wow. <laughs> Uh, I've GM'd a game for 30 once, so that was an experience. Oh, I yeah. can imagine. So <laughs> My turn to talk. Yeah. <laughs> right, I am going to stop the recording 